You're listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast. I'm just trying to get a job where I do very little, yeah. but make a, lot. a whole lot. That's the American dream, baby. <laughs> Work less, make more. Make How do I do that, Sonny? Man. What's that meme? Sleep all day and make $2,500? How do you do that? I don't know. Mm-hmm. It'd be nice though, right? Yeah, it would. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the opposite of that. You know, some people come across those jobs. I'm the guy that works too many hours and makes too little yeah, exactly. so that other people can work little and make a lot. Exactly. So it's the, it's the yin to the yang. Yeah. So it's the one of those, mm-hmm. you do your job, mm-hmm. job so well, let's give you some more to do. You know what? Okay. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so when I was a kid, I'm going to take a shot, Sonny. You can sip it, but I'm going to take a shot. Go ahead. Here you go, brother. You know, when I was a kid, that was always instilled in us, right? Hey, work hard. And, and you know what? I think there's some industries where that applies, right? Where somebody goes, man, this guy's sharp. He works hard. Let's move him up. Yeah. Not in the, indi- not in the engineering industry. No. It's totally different. It's, hey, you're, gonna, you're good. You work hard. Here's some more. <laughs> Sounds like her job. Yeah, it's my you're job. You're similar too. Yep. And you, you're I, same I, way. No, no, yeah, no. <laughs> like, no. I do less. Uh, but yeah, I know that's. I say. I, I mean, I don't. The funny thing is, I've never been worked in like a corporate America job, but I think like corporate America. Mm-hmm. And I, I even to, talked right? to her bosses, and I've even asked me like, her, her, her boss's 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 boss. Okay. Like he's the top. So he's guy. like the owner. No, no, not the owner. Cheers, Cheers, Terry. Cheers. Cheers, brother. Vicky, 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 yes. Vicky. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Cheers, sorry, sorry. Cheers, 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 Cheers. Oh, we're recording, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're recording. Yeah. She's Vicky. Thank you. So, yeah, and I've asked him. Blah, 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 blah. I asked him, what do you think, Albert? This is what I think we're looking for in, in new employees. He's like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And I look at her like, see? <laughs> well, you know what's tricky mm-hmm. about what you do? First of all, we're here with Vicky and Sunny Salceda. Uh, what's tricky about what you do Mm -hmm. is you have to be more structured than most people in your business, right? Because Mm -hmm. I would imagine, and I've never been a three-time Grammy award winning (laughs) singer, but (laughs) I would imagine... You got the beard for it. Right? Yours is way better. But yours is way better. My panza is way better. It's called Just for Men. (laughs) It's called Just for Men. (laughs) And you look sharp. Hey, you see it glistening in there. And you know, you you put just, I got Jerry Curl in there. How often, how often (laughs) do you have to color it? Color? I don't color it. I mean, how often do you have to just for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, stock in it. Let's one, just say that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they show up with a truckload and a hey, pallet. When he gets out of the shower, yeah. it's all black on the wall. <laughs> is it? You, can't see <laughs> the, you can't see through the doors anymore. You see it's black. <laughs> hey, man, we, you got to do something. You know what? I, a while back, at one point, I was like, man, should I color it? And then I thought, man, just just get old, man. Just get old. I mean, just get old, it's different man. for you because you you you're a, a personality, right? I'm just some guy that sits in a cubicle all day. Oh so, man, I'm still just gonna get old. no, no. And then plus, no. My wife doesn't listen to these, but plus, girls love the gray. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know what? That is true. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. The older we get, yeah. the I read it in a book. I mean, I didn't he know. heard. Yeah, he, he heard. heard it. I heard it. No, no, no. Women do like he it. Heard it in his ear a couple of times. I, I'm sure. No, women like it. Women will say, "No, leave the gray." I'm like, uh, I'm not ready for it yet, and do I have you, a lot of gray. Do you think uh, you're ready for it anytime soon? Or are you just gonna when I turn maybe when I hit fifty? Fifty. Well, when he I turn, tried to let his hair grow out. But he saw all the grace. Oh, so or do you have a full? I'm bald. Do you have full head of hair? I've been going oh, bald since I was 14. Oh, no, he's no, got no, full head. Full oh, really? head of hair. Okay. Is it full head of gray hair? Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's uh, those are highlights. The highlights. The uh, streaks. Those are highlights and streaks. My brother always said uh, natural highlights. The, yes. the natural highlights and, and uh, yeah, I have a lot of them. Yeah. I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm blessed with all these highlights. No, I've been going bald since I was like 14. I always had really thin hair, mm. and then. Uh, uh, after a while, you know, after for a guy, that's the kicker, right? I mean, when we get older, we just get better looking, right? That's what I think. You get, we you get st- more debonair. There you go. We, but when you start losing the hair, there's a time there where you're kind of, you're holding on to it, right? <laughs> and uh, I've known some guys, and I won't say names. <laughs> Donald Trump? They mm-hmm. went, no, no. Even, oh. It was even worse than that. Mm-hmm. But he just held on too long. And mm-hmm. it's when he finally shaved it, and he finally let it go, looks amazing. And, and that's one thing guys need to realize. Just let it go, man. You're mm-hmm. holding on to something that's not there. It looks worse than what, if you would just shave it. And there's that opens you up to a whole new realm of women. So, 
The bald look. There you the go. Hey. Yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't found them, but they're out there. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they are. I mean, but I'm married. Okay? Yeah. So we don't, we don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. My wife's yeah. married, too. Yeah, you're married, married? married oh. too. Yeah. Yeah. I hope she knows. To her. <laughs> I got to remind her every now and then. <laughs> I know you're married. <laughs> so, Sonny, I can't help but yeah. notice your yeah. cap, man. Yeah, my cap. So, um, it's three time? I have three. Yes, three time Grammy winner. So, and so uh, uh, let me ask you this, man. Sure. Uh, if I put too much of your business out there, just stop me. But sure. Too much. That's enough. Stop already. That's right. <laughs> Interview's over. Interview's over. I'm just, just walking out. I'm just kidding. Small town guy. South yeah. side of San Antonio. Yeah. When did you realize what you were going to be? And, and I'll be honest mm-hmm. with you. When when uh, uh, my buddy, our buddy Joey turned me on to you. Yeah, and, Joey. And uh, I went online and I'm watching your videos. And initially, I'm like... I, I listened to the music first and I said, that sounds good. I saw the videos, the live performance, mm-hmm. and I was like, wow, this is different. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what's cool is I love over the top. I, mm-hmm. I, and and not, I'm not saying this in a negative way. Don't take this negative. I love over the top obnoxious, right? Mm-hmm. If you're going to go out, yeah. Light it on fire, man. Let's burn mm-hmm. it. Yep. You know? Absolutely. And so that's what I saw when I saw y'all's live performance. You said I'm not obnoxious. Okay. Well, Thank no, you. no, 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 no. Just messing with I, you. But, but no, this is, yes. when I say that, I, I say it because, mm. and maybe I'm just ignorant to the Tejano scene, but Tejano music that I'm used to is very traditional, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't you don't see the, the moves. Uh, you don't necessarily always see the choreographed moves. You know, mm. it's very, you know what's so awesome about it, your live performance, is I'm watching it and I get flashbacks of Four Tops, uh, Four Seasons, those mm. older uh, bands that choreograph mm. their movements, you know. And one thing that I think when I'm watching a live show, the thing that really kind of goes, man, I dig this band, is when you're getting the visual. You know, I think so many artists, uh, music artists, focus so much on the music and the writing and the sound that they start to leave out the visual, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, when you go see, I don't know, uh, uh, some of the older guys, some yeah, of, the, yeah. some of the, the folk kind of music, mm-hmm. sure, right? Yeah. Okay, well, we, I want to see this guy kick back and, you know, I'm taking in his outfit and what he's wearing and listening to his voice. But when you show up to a party, which is what you guys are playing, we're a party, man. you want a party, man? Yeah, we're we're not we're not the band that uh, that you're gonna go there and sing the song and cry about it. You're right. you're gonna go to forget about all that. Yeah, you forget all your problems, all your stress, and we're gonna rock out. That's yeah. what we are. You know? I mean, even with the uh, intro, you know, mm. I was telling you the other day, uh, what's his name, uh, Alec? Right? Alec, yeah. He's a good he's a good hype man. He is, you know, is. and. Uh, you guys start with a very uh, rock uh, sound. I, what is it? Yeah. Is it Kiss? It's Kiss. It's Kiss. Detroit Rock City. But have you changed it before? Because I feel like I heard another song. We've yeah. done several different rock songs. Okay. We used to do Steely Dan before. We used to do, um, oh, man. What other ones did we do? I know we did a few different ones, but it's always kind of been, you know, um, Rockered out. I'm kind of an accordion player. I'm a rocker trapped in an accordion player's, an accordion player's body. Okay. So it shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a lot of uh, you know my Tejano counterparts will probably say I'm not really Tejano, and then because I'm in the middle, the, my conjunto counterparts will probably say I'm not very conjunto. So uh, I kind of call us a rock band with accordion is what I call us yeah. because we're real rocker and then we have choreography. So. I think when we went to go see, remember we went to go see um, uh, Morris Day. Yeah. Morris Day. And, and uh, you know, because not a lot of people do a show. There's no, there aren't any real show bands anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody knows it. And I'm not being, you know, negative or we have a lot of singer songwriters bands. You know, we have a, you know, this they do their song and they sing it and they stand there. And I respect that. Uh, but that's never been me. Right. Never been me. And uh, even from before, when I was a little kid, I was playing with my dad's conjunto. And I'd be playing, the, I, would, I would be pretending to play the guitar, but I did sing. And I was still like getting into it and be like, man, this guy has a lot of energy. I've always kind of been like that. Yeah. And I think people kind of expect that from us, you know. So did, did you find yourself in a weird place where 
and not to sound all dramatic, but like mm-hmm. where maybe you weren't accepted into those particular genres a hundred percent because you you played mm-hmm. a little fast and loose with that line of, of what mm-hmm. you were, you know, and then eventually, which is great because uh-huh. eventually you become your own thing, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's what everybody wants. They want something original. So did you run into a little bit of that or, or was everybody pretty much accepting of you? I think we're still there, right? We're still we're, there. We're yeah. still there. Yeah. We're still there. You know, when I started, I started with Eddie Gonzalez and that had never been done. And then we broke up from, with we left Eddie and then we went with Vida and then people used to tell us, well, you sound like Eddie, but it was always... That was my stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, then I left Vida, and then they're like, "Well, you sound like Eddie and Vida." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I if you look at there. the, there's a <laughs> there's a common denominator yeah. there, right? And that's what a lot of people don't realize, right? And I don't think I've ever really been public about it until just today, right now. It must be the tequila. <laughs> but drink up, man. Drink you're right. Here you going. You know, but it, that's the common denominator, and I am the architect of that sound. Yeah. So. Naturally, yes. I mean, it's like, you know, when when David Lee Roth played with Eddie Van Halen, it still sounded like Eddie Van Halen. When Sammy Hagar played with Eddie Van Halen, it still sounded like Eddie Van Halen. Mm-hmm. So what happened to me was is that that sound was kind of associated with Eddie. But if you go back one record before El Disgusto album uh, and listen to the Ay Cariñito album, it's way different. Mm. It sounds very, you know, bubblegummy Tejano. Yeah. Typical yeah. Tejano. So, yeah. And, and, and so then I came in and it wasn't me alone. And when it was a combination of, you know, Eddie brought in, you know, this one song and we were kind of toying with different sounds and he would dance. And I had just started playing, learning how to play accordion. So I didn't know a lot, to be honest with you. And so I would make up accordion licks to whatever we were dancing mm. to. And then in turn, the drummer would follow me on the on the snare drum or whatever. And that was a whole... It was nothing really special. It was almost like conjunto on steroids. I get you. That's what that was. I call it conjunto aggressive. Yeah. Because it's really aggressive. And And so... But that sound has remained with me i mean people have tried to mimic it uh you know people have tried to duplicate it replicate it but when it comes to the live show the live performances you know it's it's what i do that's what i do that's my thing that's my jam that's the only way i know how to do it i can't do it like anybody else i can't even i can't even copy myself really i just it's a vibe yeah it's an experience it's it's something that you know and so um, well, I think that's I think as a as a consumer of music, right? Yeah. I think that when you see somebody performing the way you do or or other artists mm-hmm. and it, and you can tell that it's coming from inside them, right? Yeah. It's yeah. not it's not hey, let's produce something and and sell it. It's hey, this is this is what I do. I would do this at the house, you <laughs> yeah. know? And, yeah. and so people Yeah. The consumer of that music can sit there and they can see yeah. that it's authentic and that it's it's original and that uh and that it's it's, it's hot, man. I I'm, I was sitting there in the living room, my wife was gone, and I was cracking up. And I was slapping my knee, and I was just kind of—I'd turn away from the computer, and I'd come back to it because that's not what I was used to, right? Uh, the, yeah, the sound yeah. I heard was yeah, was uh, uh, some some flair of '90s Tejano, right? So yeah. there's 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 a touch of that there, but the visual was like this dude gets it, you know? This dude gets the visual, mm-hmm. you know? You can hear the crowd screaming because. They weren't. They don't always expect to see that. You know, I was, I was mm-hmm. talking to a friend of mine, and he was like, yeah, "He shakes his ass a lot, man." And I was, I was like, I was like what, do you, "What do you mean?" You know. And then yeah, when I watched yeah. it, and again, it comes back to being authentic mm-hmm. and racing some hell, man. And I mean, when you go to a yeah. show and you're downtown San Antonio or wherever you're playing, and you, you know you're opening for somebody, or I would imagine if you're more than likely, you guys are closing, right? But I would Usually. imagine there's times where if you're gonna open for somebody, you wanna go, you wanna go. Hey, as a performer, I wanna uh-huh. make sure I never open for this guy again. And so let's <laughs> light him up, right? And that's what you guys do, man. It was yeah. so it's so entertaining, man. I appreciate that. You know, so good. We're 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 grateful for the opportunity. A lot of the times that does that, people they'll they book us. You've seen it happen. You know what yeah. happens? 
Well, they book us and then they're like, well, <laughs> can you kind of bring it down a little bit? Oh, really? Or they ask that? You? Yeah, sometimes they do. <laughs> but it's because a lot of the times when you're at shows, they... Yeah. People are just like in awe and they're just standing there watching. And sometimes they're just like looking well, at them like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what are they doing? Well, again, it's What's different, right? Yeah. It's outside of what, you know, when, when I'm going to go get a, a, you know, a, a Spanish band or a Tejano band and mm-hmm. they're, I'm bringing them in, in my mind. And again, mm-hmm. before I watch the visual, yeah. I had an idea of what this is, you know? Yeah. And then when you see it, you go, Oh no! This is this is a rock show. Yeah, it's you know? different. So, so what I always say is this is, and what I meant by that is that usually they usually so, and when we first started they would when I first went on my own let me say because uh, when we I was with Vida we're, we were closing a lot of shows but when we, when I went on my own for some reason they would put me in the beginning or in the middle and then at the end they're like oh we should have probably had you close yeah we're like we didn't know that. It How was, good of a feeling is it? We didn't know that. We didn't know it was all that, <laughs> yeah. you know, because they thought it was going to be a conjunto. I don't know why they would think it was a conjunto, but um, the other thing is that, um, you know, uh, we're we are we're really a rock band, you know. We're yeah. just what we are, and 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 the thing is, people want to be entertained. People want to be entertained. They want to see a show. They want to, you know, they want to have a good time, and uh, you know, we we just and that's because I've toned it down this these past like five years ago. I kind of have toned it more a little because people for a long time they thought you know I was a major cokehead and like no can you imagine like, I'm if just I just a regular cokehead I'm just a regular <laughs> one of the mill I'm not no for real they, they, and I don't you know I I think if I me and my friend of mine Alex Mikesner we were talking about that and he's another accordionist and he's super hyper he's like a white Sunny Salceda okay yeah. yeah or I'm a Mexican Alex Meissner right okay. whatever we're in, interchangeable does we're he have s- a beautiful beard too or no? he doesn't he's uh, hairless he's hairless oh he's got a lot of hair on but the top he's of tall. his head okay. but he's tall okay okay he's chulo también oh I have to look him up yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's super talented but he's really energetic and he's yeah. he he so he resides on a higher frequency than all of us. Mm-hmm. Like he makes me look low key. Com- really? Like I'm like right now I'm low key because I'm not playing. When I get on stage, it, it, the the dial goes up. The Sasha Fierce comes. Yeah, up. The, the my <laughs> Sasha, the Sasha. What is it? What is it called? My yeah. Sasha Fierce. What was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Beyonce's yeah. Son, yeah. Uh, Sasha Fierce. Sunny, the, Sunny Fierce. Sunny Fierce. <laughs> Sunny Fierce. <laughs> Saucy McDickens comes out. Yeah. Saucy McDickens. Saucy McDickens. And and you know the thing is that you know we were talking about like can you imagine if we were like. Co-kids is like, it'd probably bring us down, honestly. Yeah. Because we're just always energetic, right? That's what I tell people about drinking. People go, do you drink? I said, dude, I'm so obnoxious. Could you imagine me drinking? Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm, I'm already dumb as it is. Yeah, it's sober. crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm stupid. Hey, well, let me, yeah. I want to ask you something real quick about uh, the accordion has always been a very original sound. You mm-hmm. know, and when you had... Man, I was in love with Flaco Jimenez. Yeah. You know, and Flaco was... So, is he still alive? Yes. He's still alive, yes. So talented. Yeah, and, super and, talented. Uh, but it was always like this classic sound yeah. and this classic mm-hmm. movement. And to see it to see it <clears throat> front and center, right? Typically, you yeah. have your electric guitar or your, your front man singing. Mm-hmm. And you bring the accord... And to me, it's like the accordion is a beautiful instrument. It sounds amazing. The movements to get it to to make those sounds mm-hmm. are imp- are can be impressive, and it's like it it makes so much sense that you do what you do with with that instrument because you should showcase that damn thing. It's like the lead guitar in Tejano in in conjunto or depends what kind of Tejano you do. You know, it 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 is the lead guitar of the group, right? But uh, yeah, the accordion is fun. It's fun. I think um, a lot. Of, I get a lot of kids that are. Like, wow, man, I didn't know I liked Tejano. And I said, well, we're not really Tejano, but, you know, we're, we're along that vein. Mm-hmm. But we're more like a rock band. And, you know, you, you, you see that, right, the kids? And yeah, there's a lot of kids that are like, wow, how did, how did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. didn't think you, were, you could do that with the accordion. Yeah, I know. We, didn't know it was, we didn't know accordion was cool like that. <laughs> you, you know, that's the thing, because even in my mind, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, that's a cool instrument and it sounds great. But it was always just, hey, move it to the back. Right, mm-hmm. uh, Flaco. I guess with the Texas Tornadoes, typically is when I found Flaco. Flaco's mm-hmm. probably been playing fifty years before oh, yeah, that. Yeah. But it's like 
you know, they set up that music for the Texas Tornadoes in a way where you, they always showcase Flaco at some mm-hmm. point. Yeah, absolutely. You know, granted, it may not have been the whole song, but he got his 20, 30 seconds, mm-hmm. right? Where he was in, up front. And that's kind of when I really started noticing it. But, uh, uh, no, it's, it's, it's amazing, and I'd love to see what you do with it, man. That, oh, thank you. I want to ask you something, though. Okay. When did he start dry humping accordions? <laughs> oh. And what brought that on? Oh, he's been oh. doing that forever now. Has he really? <laughs> yeah. For, since 1994. Yeah. 95. 94, 95. <laughs> when he started with Vida. Yeah. What, what, Eddie. When did oh, you yeah, throw Eddie. that move in, man? Was it just something that you did, or did you think about it? Or you say, hey, I, was it a feeling in the song? Um, You know, we were showboating. I think Eddie and I were showboating. And I think I just threw it in. Because Eddie and I were very competitive, mm-hmm. right? friendly competitiveness right we were always trying to out show each other on stage Mm -hmm. and so if i did something he would do it if he did it i would do it so (laughs) you know we're just out showing each other i've been doing it for a long time i've been helping my career for long i shouldn't have my hips should be thrown out by now but they're probably powerful they're they're very they're very powerful (laughs) power hips you know all right we'll we'll move on from there vicky's Vicky's getting red a little awkward there it's a little awkward (laughs) awkward but yeah i've been in it for a long time it i'm I'm the guy that humps his accordion yes (laughs) amongst many other things but that's one of the things that's one of my one of my tricks one of my tricks yeah it's impressive man i'm not gonna lie (laughs) that's what she said (laughs) that's what she said (laughs) the funny thing is though that i've been asked that before <laughs> what have you been asking for taking? Oh man, Let's you heard, now you start. Now you, <laughs> know, hey, hey, you want me to mute him? I'll mute him. You go ahead, girl. Go ahead, ask you. Like, <laughs> is he really like that? Is, what does he take? What is he on? Mm-hmm. What, what's going on? Yeah. Well, you, you know what's funny is it, there's a. It, I go back to the small town living, right? Because mm-hmm. we talked about it on the phone mm-hmm. once before. I grew up in a small town down in George West, mm-hmm. and it's like that isn't the atmosphere. Now we got a lady named Mackie who's who's wild and a lot of fun. <laughs> but in those areas, it's there's that's not really the atmosphere that produces a personality that's that's so uh, uh, elevated, right? So mm-hmm. energetic. So to see that come out of a small community, and to see what you've done with it, and again, you've been doing it since you were what five or six years mm-hmm. old, five years old, you know. So, w- what year was it that you won your first Grammy? It was 04, I mean, right? 04? 04, yeah. 04, 04, 2004. What, what, was, uh, what was that feeling for you coming from a small town south side of San Antonio to being on a huge stage and being recognized for your craft? Was, was it something that you I mean, felt like, hey, I've earned it, I'm here? Or was no, it kind of a shocker for you? No, it was a shocker. I mean, because, you know, I I never did it for the for the awards, right? I always, I always played music because I love music. That's my passion. And... So when we, number one, that album that I did was the side project. That album was Polcas Acordiones y Gritos, which was with, there was three of us. It was David Lee, Joao Guzman, and myself. And I also was nominated with my band, Grupo Vida. So we were both nominated. And we were like, dude, this story, it's so funny because it's, it's a crazy story. Uh, I'll try to make it as short as, as we as I can. We were supposed to drive to Arizona. Hey, I, got, I got 14 hours of recording oh, time shit. to have that. <laughs> okay, we were, we, were, we were supposed to go to. We were supposed to fly. I mean, we we're supposed to drive to Arizona. We we're doing a nominees dance, and back then I did all the promotions for the band. I did all the you know whatever we had to do. I was there at the studio doing all the stuff promotions, and the RV had broken. It was broken the day before or two days before we we're leaving. And I fought with everybody, like, we're going, because I already did all the promotions. We got to go. I don't care how we get there. We're going to go. And it was, you were in Arizona, or it was being held in we Arizona? Were in, it was being held in Arizona. So okay. we're going to go from San Antonio to Arizona. We're going to drive, play that gig in Arizona. Then we're, from there, we're going to drive to California, to the Grammys. And I, we, we, we freaking stuffed nine guys in a conversion band. <laughs> I mean, we were sleeping all on top of each other, and oh, man, it was ugly. And... uh and then we drove, we got, we went to, then we got to California and, um, we barely made it on time. And as I'm, as we're run, walking in, running in, they're saying, and the winner is, and all I hear is, polcas acordiones y gritos. So nobody shows up. David Lee doesn't show up. Joel Guzman doesn't show up. I'm the only one that's there. 
So guess who looks like he won a Grammy by himself? <laughs> like, do you remember G.I. Joe? <laughs> yeah. Showing up to half the battle, right? <laughs> yeah. So I look like I went, and I and I go, and I and I accept the award. I'm huffing. <sighs> I like to thank, <laughs> thank, you know, you know, and uh, you know, and it, it, well, the feeling was it's a, uh, it's overwhelming, dude. It's overwhelming. I didn't I didn't feel. I didn't feel like, oh, I deserve it. It was just like, oh, what, what in the world just happened? Like, how did this happen? Like, I didn't think it was awesome to be nominated. I never expected that. But to win, man, that was like the icing on the cake. And you're you're on cloud nine. But what happened to me, honestly, what it did to me is I, it made me feel like I was under a microscope. Mm. Because now, I mean, now you're, you know, Emilio's won a Grammy. Selena's won a Grammy. I mean... And so now it's like, oh, now you're on the radar. Now people are watching you. Like, they're really watching you now. And I kind of felt like a sense of responsibility. Like, everything that I did from that point on had to be at a certain level. Because if it, if it, if it fell short of it, I mean, well. So the, the, I guess the pros and cons of being a Grammy winner is there are certain expectations, you know. You know, whether you're playing a, doing a show or you're going to the studio or, you know, or just... I mean, even as simple as like, ooh, look at, oh, he's a Grammy winner. Mira lo tan chanclas and cutoffs and shorts. Mira lo, que bonito. So, so let yeah. me ask you this, because I'm, I'm trying mm -hmm. to put myself in your shoes. Does that, that's a, that's a, some extra stress that you didn't have before. Yeah. But it, it, does it kind of, now granted, you're, you're removed from that, from that time period right mm -hmm. now, but did it make it to where it was almost less fun because of the stress? No, no, it didn't make it less fun. Okay. Actually, what it did was, it, it, what it did finally do is it, it kind of encapsulated, it confirmed, you know, because I was always like the mad scientist in the band, right? I was always the one, you know, ask her what I used to carry a bag with, the cassettes. He had a little case that he would carry around. It was his dad's case. And he cassettes. had his cassettes, his little recorder. And his no. notepad. Then I had the, the VH80, you remember? Had well, that was a different bag, yeah. but yeah. And so, he would want to record. He'd oh. take it with him into the RV. I was always working. I was working. While the guys were in the mall or, you know, with their side girlfriends, I was in the, in the, in the back of the RV, you know, writing a song or laying down a song. And so all of those things that, were, that I was thinking that I was, you know, just dreaming and hoping, it's just, it confirms it. Like, mm -hmm. I wasn't crazy after all because I would spend a lot of time in the studio, uh, you know, and, and, and mind you, I wouldn't get paid to go to the studio. I wouldn't get paid to hang out at the at the record label. I didn't get paid to do promotions. I didn't get paid to call the radio stations. I didn't get paid to arrange, produce, you know, select songs, call songwriters, get with songwriters, meet with songwriters, pick up their songs, write a song with another song. I didn't get paid for any of that stuff. But what happened is that it was is it's it's like I have a friend who graduated from Incarnate Word with a degree in music business. And the thing is that I have, I should have my own degree vicariously through him because a lot of the same things we were going through, I was just living, we were living it together while he was going to school. But he learned so much. This is like hands-on stuff. So was he able to help you a little bit, I mean? I mean, we helped each other. Okay. We helped each other. But the thing is that, you know, I, I, what happened after that is all the education that I got from, you know, real life work experience. You know, the guys, you know, people, I would, you know, they would, they would haze me about it because, you know, I would hang out, I would hang out with the record label president. I hang out with the vice president, hang out with the radio promotions people. I was never out. I was always working. I was always there. Were those folks uh, receptive to you or, or did yeah. you have to work kind of no, hard no, 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 to no. get in? No, they loved it because okay. no, because nobody else did it. Oh, gotcha. Nobody else wanted to do it. You know, everybody, everybody's there for the glory. Everybody's there for the gig. Yeah. Everybody's there to hear the crowd screaming. But are you there at eight o'clock in the morning in the studio? Are you rehearsing, you know, till, you know, you start at noon and are you rehearsing till midnight? And I'm just like, man, we're just getting started, man. This is, pfft, this is just a warm up. Yeah. So it just kind of confirmed and just, it, it made me realize like, you know, I wasn't crazy after all these years. And then it made me, when I went to the Grammys and then we went to go meet, you know, went to the after party, it made me realize how close uh, things were in reach of us. Like we were not, we, you know, they have, you know how they say the yeah. six degrees. It wasn't this, this distant dream. No, it was no. like right on the other side of that door. Exactly. <laughs> like, and then when I, you know, became That's more, awesome, when man. I became more involved and I learned like, you know, Hey, the, the guys from Miami, the guys from New York, the guys from Nashville, the guys from California, they know about the Hano. They knew what it was. 
they all knew. They all, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that sign. I know this art sign. It's like, you do? I mean, I was sitting there with Alex. Was it Alex um, Acuna? Alex Acuna. He's a jazz uh, percussionist, uh, artist, like super, super. I mean, the guy hangs out with the president of Peru. He's oh, wow. super famous. And uh, he's like, oh, hey, Sony, you know, me gusta tu música, and I love y'all's music. Tejano, that's my favorite. I was like, really? And like, like salseros, all these people. And, that's awesome, man. And like, they all knew it. And I could, and I would try to explain it to the band. And they're like, whatever. I was like, no, for real. I'm serious. They know who we are. So I just kind of learned, you know, just like this, these, this is just something else we do. But we're doing, we're all doing different kinds of music. They're bigger markets, smaller markets. But at the end of the day, we're all the same. Yeah. You know? You know, that that's, that's kind of the crazy thing, right? Like, I'm I'm late to the game for almost everything, you know, and I always kind of I always kind of rightfully wrongfully complain about mm-hmm. being raised in a small community, you know, because gotcha. you know back then I told people back then you either went to work at the state prison or the federal prison mm-hmm. or the refinery, you know, and I, I even tell people growing up we almost never left George West. You know, mm-hmm. we might go to Beville to, to Bells to get some school clothes, but that's it. You know, we don't we couldn't afford to go to San Antonio or we couldn't afford to go to Corpus. Or yeah. Everything was in George West. So you, your mind is like, there's nothing outside of this place, mm-hmm. you know. But when you get exposed to certain things and, you, and mm-hmm. again, you go back to, hey, these dreams are tangible, man. They're mm-hmm. not as far. They're not in this other world that no. we're, we're not going to ever get to. It's right here, you know. That kind of lights a fire, I would yes. imagine. So oh, it did. That's awesome. So we got back, and I was like, man, we need to do this, and we need to do that. And they're looking at me like, oh, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. You're crazier than before now. And it wasn't that. It's I had seen. It's yeah. like I had seen it. I was like, oh, my gosh. Because it's different when you're a nominee, and you're walking at the after party. Like, you know, but when you're like... You win, and they, you know everybody's walking around with their medallions, you know, and everybody's you know just hey, you want oh yeah, what you win, and we're all it's like it's, a fraternity, right? Yeah, we're all like oh here's my, and we're all shaking hands and exchanging cards. Oh, what do you do? I do this. That's a what do you do? Who do you work for? What do you? Oh, I work for Yamaha, uh, Yahoo Music, or I work for Universal, I work for Warner, I work for Warner Nashville. You know, I do. You know, I'm the producer for the Nine Inch Nails. You know, I'm, you know, Beyonce's dad walk around. You know, at some of the meetings I used to go to when I was on the the national committees and stuff like that. And so you really realize how close things are it's just a matter of i think sometimes we are we put our own like wall in front of us that is like non-existent just to like because we're afraid to succeed yeah. but when you realize it's just right there you know and and you just got to push through that it, it's interesting because uh, a couple of things you know my uh my wife has a like an honorary cousin and uh She's a jazz musician. Mm-hmm. Her dad's a jazz musician. And it's it's crazy because she'd come to town. They played the Tobin. And uh, her name's Kayla Waters. And we'd taken her to lunch the next day. She was leaving town. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because people kept staring at us. And I told my like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big, fat Mexican, right? Nah. <laughs> when you stare at me too long, I'm no, getting irritated. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, I, you're I've not. got the camera. You're to, just the big fish bone. Lens, the fish lens. <laughs> you're a big bone. You're just big bone. I have some thick bones, man. <laughs> You know, I was like, why do these people keep looking over here? They come mm-hmm. over and they wanted autographs. They all had yep. CDs they bought. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because we didn't grasp who she is in her profession. Ah, you know, and yeah. we find it was, I think it was like a month later, she had her own, like, uh, uh, XM radio channel and on the jazz. Oh. Channel. You know, it was like, this what? Girl's, this girl's really doing something, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and she's doing great for herself. But then I, I got another buddy named uh, Chuck Bresenio. And it's funny because when you talk about all the work, I've done a podcast mm. with him. We've talked about it before. Yeah. He does everything, man. Yeah. And it's like you see him posting at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and then he's driving the next day. The vans are always breaking down or catching fire. or Somebody stole his guitar the other day. Oh, what the heck? And it's just all this work. And it's funny yeah. because, like, like you said, as, as from us, we see somebody do something great, and we go, "Oh man, that's awesome!" You know, yeah. look how lucky and, and talented this guy is. You know, these are these are blessings, right? Yeah. But at the same time, we don't see the miles of work and failures mm-hmm. and and broken down vehicles and stolen guitars mm-hmm. and, and you know work that didn't work out or connections that didn't pan out. You know, and it's like we're seeing a fraction of mm-hmm. of everything because. There's so much work that goes into it for you guys, and and yeah. it's got you know you love it, it. you all you love it. And it's it, not work, but yeah, I get it. And, and you know it's it's interesting because like it's it's an it's art. It is. 
And when you're the artist, you'll do anything for it, mm-hmm. you know. But people need to understand, it's it's not just showing up and knocking it out of the park. There's a lot of work. There. Yeah, y'all get to see the glitz and glam, right? Yeah. But it's there's a lot of there's a lot of leg work, and I know it's leg work. We say work, but you know when you love what you do, it's really not work, you know. And and that's me and your wife work. Y'all work, yes, yeah. y'all work. It's y'all work. Y'all work. But you know, <laughs> y'all do. But you know, you, it's just you just know what you love to do, and and it's it's like you have this this drive, and I don't know. I quit at least once a year for sure. Yeah. But I don't quit being a musician. I quit being a boss. Like I want to quit. So every once a year, I'm like, oh man, I'm tired of this band crap. Yeah, I'm tired. No more. I want to stay home and watch the Dallas Cowboys. Whether they win or lose, I'm going to stay home and watch them. Yeah, they're going to lose. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. They won. They won a few games. Hey, man, I've been a Chicago's Bear fan since oh. I was a kid, and we haven't been oh. any good since 84, 85, so I can say what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I can say what I want. You know, and, and so, but yeah, when you love it, you know, you can ask my wife. She'll tell you, man. I, I, I used <sighs> But you wouldn't be happy no. not doing those duties anymore because no. I'm no. getting the vibe that you're like me. I, I I love to complain about what I have to do, mm. but I don't want anybody else to do it. Yeah, no. You know, it's kind of one of those things. But. Yeah, that is true. I don't think I can. Compl- do I complain? Oof. No, you don't complain. Never? Never. <laughs> do we, I don't know if I complain or not. I may, I may complain. So In my head, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you. Just in talking, he is he's very focused, and rightly so. You know, he's at the top of his craft, and... It's it's a it's a it's a passion that he has, you know. Outside of everything else, it's a means to provide for a family. You, how do you deal with the amount of work that he takes on? Because you you love him, right? Yeah. You want to support him, but there's got to be times where it's like, hey man, uh, we need some family time. Yeah. You know, do you, does he good about making time for that, or do you have to wrangle him in every now and then? No, he's good about making time, but of course there's times where he gets into, he's a really type, he's OCD. Mm, So when he's on something, (laughs) he's going to be on it for Mm. that stretch of period. And so there's, there are times where I'm like, Hey, hold up, let's do this. Or we have to do that. Or we have to go here. Um, But no, he's usually good about it. He loves to spend time with the kids and just kind of wind down. That's his peace being at home and just winding down. So that's a no. little reset button. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he does do that. Um, he mm-hmm. may be on his phone, you know, posting something, editing something, but he's still kind of relaxing in some form. <laughs> I never really stopped working. I yeah. just, I'm just like, there with the kids, I'm like editing video. Hey, what's up? And I'm editing video. <laughs> yeah. how, how, do the kids, mm. uh, how do the kids take everything in? Because I would imagine, mm-hmm. I, I would imagine there's, a, there's a lot of seeing you guys work. And you, yeah. you know, you, you've got a job. You don't have a job that allows you to really ever stop. You know, it's like being your own business owner. My buddy that owns this place, you know, he's like, Mm -hmm. you're always working. You know, it might be a weekend. It might be a night. You know, you're always working. You know, if you want to be successful, you're always working. Yeah. And that's that's what he tells me. You know, do the kids pick up on what you're doing? And is it something that like you can see that they're starting to pick up good traits from you guys with your work ethic and whatnot? Or is it something where you're like, hey, I got to I got to allocate some time to, to little ones and, and you break it down mm-hmm. a little bit more, little, I guess a little more structure. Or do they see dads wild and they're ready to be wild too? I used to, I, the way I used to do it is I would put them to work with me. Mm. So I'm all inclusive, right? So I, I include them. I try to include them. Now that they're getting older, like my daughter's getting older. Um, well, I saw a video. She's with the uh, Companas. Uh, that's my oldest daughter. Okay, my, my, okay. Younger daughter my younger daughter. Uh, she... Um, she used to help. She used to go with us all the time. But now that she's getting older, she's doing her own thing. And but um, I think for the most part, they they get it. Like dad's a musician. Dad plays. I know they used to complain that dad, how come you take forever to leave the sun player? You got you're saying bye to everybody. And yeah, when when our daughter was little, uh, uh, he he was finished up at a show at mm-hmm. Rosedale, and he was walking. He had her, in her, you know, holding her by her hand. And of course, people are coming up to him. He's like, "Dad, why are these people keep coming up to you? We're trying to leave." What, 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 like, she didn't understand it. Yeah, yeah. she didn't. Of course, yeah. she understands it now. She's gonna be thirteen in yeah. two weeks, so yeah, she doesn't she want. So happy birthday to her. Yeah, she doesn't want anything to do with it as yeah. much yeah. anymore. But yeah. they so, understand. So they kind of. Do you think they they 
might follow your footsteps music wise or is it one of those things where they've had enough through you and they're tempted to do other things it, it's hard to tell right now with 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 my daughter because she's going through this teenager phase and i don't i mean she used to she she did sing uh she kind of sings in the choir but i think right now we're she's going through the like she because her friends know who what i do mm. and her teachers know what i do because i've gone to the school and i've and i think she's I, it happens a lot to us so the kids of artists I'll say this, you seem like a very active and involved dad which i think i is really awesome. am i am but i think that, i think she she doesn't want to be compared to dad mm. so she kind of like shies away ah, I got you. when she was young she would sing and she i actually was looking through old videos last night and like man i didn't realize me has sang this much when she was little and now she sings in the choir but she barely sings right uh, you know it's like <sighs> like they don't <laughs> like you know typical teenagers right yeah. it's almost like reverse of what how i grew up because i was when i was her age i was already like pfft, like singing and like i was in it i was yeah. in it but but we were my dad was had a local conjunto and you know you know, he so it was different. It was a was different. Was that your thing. example growing up? Was your yeah, dad? my dad, my dad. Gotcha. Um, my son, what do you think? I mean, Jaron, what do you think about Jaron? Jaron, our, our youngest. Well, I think later on. Um, funny thing, funny story. Sunny bought him a accordion couple oh, years ago. <laughs> um, he was what probably he was five. five. I bought five? him accordion five when he was five. Sonny brings it out to him. We're in the living room. Sonny's like super excited, showing him this accordion. And he's like looking at Sonny. He's like, Dad, I don't want to be like you. Oh, wow. Well, well, like, good for him. I don't, I don't want to play the accordion. Yeah. Like, Sonny's face just I dropped. Like, I was like, no, it gets better. It gets better. It, it, it gets better because he's, he's an entrepreneur at five. Watch this. Okay. Check this out. Check this out. He saw that part. So he says, Dad, Dad. I'm gonna own a restaurant when I get when I get older. Um, I'm not gonna have time to play accordion. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, but I can sell it for you and make some money for you <laughs> at five years old. Yeah. And, and then so, what's got him in the restaurant? I don't even know why he wanted he a likes, restaurant. He likes making things. Oh, he likes. He's, okay. he's, he's creative. really into producing. He he's, does his own shows. He makes okay. his own little. He's super artistic, dude. Like That's he cool. loves Chuck E. Cheese, so he makes his own oh. animations, yeah. animatronics. He makes his own. He like, oh, he's. I think he's gonna be an engineer, yeah. dude. Wow. Yeah. So he's, he's not engineer. far from being, you know, in the little music spotlight or whatever. He's not far. He just doesn't want to be. Compared Plain. to that, but he's yeah. he's also very. It sounds like he's, he's very artistic, very and creative. Is. That kid is so creative, dude. I mean, I I I don't even think like him. He, I would show up to the house. He has a billion toys, but he makes his own. He had, he had one time a um, shoe box, three boxes, and it was like he were overlooking like Universal Studios. He had a, he's like, this is my Chuck E. Cheese band. This is my. I forgot the other band. He had three bands. He goes, they're all playing. These are the different bands I have. Sometimes I show up and you have he had towels on the you know like you're the wine the wine counter, uh -huh. but on the dresser, and he had like straws all put together and like all tied together like you know within each other. And I said, what's that? And I would get, what do you what do you have there? That's my show, Dad. He'd do it with the fireplace. He'd make a show. Then we got him lights, and he would have lights, and he would put on the, the TV and. And always drawing. I said, man, I like when you draw. So he draws and draws. He's really creative. That's awesome. So, is there an architect or engineer in the family that he's emulating? No, or it's but just no, all him. No, it's it's all him. I don't even know. I didn't. He knows who. Like Aaron. I think one time we. Go, I told him, you know who designed it. He's like, we'll look it up. And I think it's Aaron Fector. Aaron Fector. So he knows the history of Chuck E. Cheese, of of showbiz pizza, everything. And he makes his own animatronics out of cardboard. <laughs> and, and dude, he is. <laughs> next level and, and but he, he makes it to where the mouths move and mm -hmm. he'll insert little like uh -huh. pieces of paper we have no clue he how he comes up with it but, awesome. but yeah. he's been doing it since he was about two he two started years. his own yeah. so little shows. so he doesn't have video games but i have a ton of crayons and markers <laughs> and Everywhere. gum on my walls because he doesn't have tape he's putting gum on with papers and oh my gosh but, but you know what's cool about that is like yeah. i know a lot of people that play video games whether they're kids or they're older and that's cool yeah. but you're participating in somebody else's creativity. Your son is making his own. He is. And that's a big difference, man. 
You know, I, yeah. I don't know your daughters, but something tells me he's going to be the meal ticket, man. Yeah, he, So he's your retirement. Yeah. He's my retirement. Man. <laughs> that kid is, man. I, I'm telling you, man. The whole thing about games, uh, yeah. one day he came to us and he's like, Dad, I, I want a Nintendo Switch. How's that? So he's like, no. Mm, I like when you draw. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I, don't, well, I like me drawing. A couple of hours later, he comes with a little... Um, he, Ziploc. Well, he puts the YouTube on. Yeah. Well, he, had, he was watching YouTube, and then a couple hours later, he comes with a little Ziploc, and he has little pieces of paper, and he brings it out, and he's like, "Dad, will you play with me my Nintendo Switch?" He made his own. He oh, drew he made out. his own, dude. <laughs> so you know how they, the gamers have the YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. So we were pretending to play Nintendo with the controls he drew and put in plastic. Ziploc. He made himself. That's so interesting to see such a, a young person right. with that that mentality and that mind frame. You know, that's. That's uh, that's very rare. Yeah, I was eating dirt, and I at his age, man, I was eating. Here, you, here's Sonny humping humping accordions. And my son's at 46, making, and his yeah. son's making electronics. Yeah, yeah. yeah he is. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world? So can't just be like a normal kid and like eat mud and like stuff you're not supposed to. He's he's something else. And and uh, but he does sing though. He did. He like he yeah, he, does. He, he was in choir and, and and he was practicing his songs. I remember we were at Fiesta Texas. Don't know Fiesta Texas. Yeah. What? And I said okay, and I put him on the sing me a song, and he right there. Boom! Started singing me a song on the and spot. Like, on the spot. Nice. You know, he's even held back. How to hold back? I was like, he's like, oh, dad, have another one. I was like, oh shit! Wow, <laughs> oh, a little concert. Like, sit, sit down, sit down, oh, hold, sit down, dad. Hold, hold on. I was like, wow. So he made, you know, he got on stage with us for a while, and then he kind of got discouraged. You know, I kind of, I didn't write him real hard, but I was telling him like. You know, I wanted him to pick up the cowbell. I said, like, "Come on, pick up the cowbell." And he, but you know, he, maybe he'll come back. I almost brought a cowbell. Did you should have brought a cowbell, yeah. man. He, he, and he, and I was paying him. I'd pay him like five dollars a yeah. night, and he had his little money. I said, "Hey, you need to make money. What are you gonna do?" And I keep telling him, well, "I don't know, Dad. Well, I mean, you can come back and play again. You need to make money." It's you, interesting to hear Sonny tell these stories uh -huh. because, like, I'm envisioning uh -huh. that dad that's like. Hey, uh, you're gonna be a football player, and it's and, and like uh, you don't you don't make them become a football player. Uh, you just put a whole bunch of football shit around. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh no, they have everything around dude, them. I, I mean, guitars, I, accordions, dude, you did, yeah. drum set. I'm, the next thing I want to buy him is a guitar. I'm gonna buy him. A guitar. He's been. He kind of hinted about it a year or two years ago, and I did, we didn't even get him a guitar. I'm gonna get him a guitar, but I may get him somebody. I'm gonna get somebody else to teach him. Yeah. Because for some reason, and it happens to all of us musicians. Our kids will not learn from us. They'll learn from some. They'll go listen to somebody else. Oh, my wife's that way. Oh. If, if I tell you, hey, go tell my wife this, mm -hmm. and I've been telling her for six months, she'll listen to you. Because I'm, I'm just, yeah. the, it's almost like, and if kids are the same mm -hmm. way, it's like there's so much interaction there my entire mm -hmm. life. I, I will listen to somebody else mm -hmm. just because it's a different voice mm -hmm. and it's a different yeah. person. So I never do that. No, he does that all the time. I just, never do that. I'll tell I him never do that. Like, oh yeah, that, that'd be good. And nothing. A couple of weeks later, you know, I talked to so and so, and they told me we should do this, and I think we should do that. Like, oh really? We should. No. Right. So, no. So yeah. Sunny's my wife. Then. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right. No. All right. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> was that earlier today, or was it yesterday? When you're like, oh, I should have listened to you. Was it right. was about traffic. Hey, yeah, traffic. Hey, don't ever say that yeah. to me, man. I know I should. That's have. like giving up the remote. Don't, I know. Don't do that, man. Yeah, I don't even say anything anymore. I'm like, yeah, oh, she just. Okay. We've been together for 25 yeah. years now, so that's yeah. awesome. I uh, mm -hmm. actually told a joke to a guy who was married 25 years today. Mm. Uh, heard it a long time ago. A comedian says, uh, "I've been married 25 years," and he goes, "It feels like 25 minutes." <laughs> and all the women in the crowd go, "Oh!" And he goes, "Underwater." Oh, <laughs> underwater. I mean, it's underwater. No, yeah. man. It, it, hey, so Vicky sing, man? Can Vicky sing? No. A little bit. She's just kind of shy. What's her uh, What's her genre? Vicky's genre? She's a country girl. Okay. She likes country. <laughs> who's, your, who's your favorite country she artist? She loves Tim McGraw. <laughs> Tim McGraw? <laughs> that's her hall, pa hall pass. Okay. okay. She already told me. If and I meet I, Tim McGraw. I think that's my hall pass, too. <laughs> <laughs> Tim McGraw. <laughs> Let me you know, girl. It, right? we'll, we'll go find him. Well, you know, he's yeah. coming to Austin in a couple of weeks. Is he really? <laughs> <laughs> she already knows. She knows. He's staying at this hotel. <laughs> he's staying at this hotel. <laughs> Room. Oh, he's arriving. He's, on, <laughs> he's on flight, so and so. Oh my God. What's your favorite Tim McGraw song? <laughs> uh, my best friend. My best friend. Okay, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else do you? Who else do you listen to? Country wise. Uh, country wise. Um, I like Jelly Row. I've been listening to a lot of Jelly Row here lately. He's got a great voice, mm -hmm. and he's got some really good songs. Mm -hmm. uh, 
yeah, I've been listening to. Yeah. Who are you listening to lately? Don't tell me uh, Sunny been, Salceda. I've been listening to, I've been listening to uh, Conjunto Foreplay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I kind of listen to a lot of everything, though. Have you ever yeah. heard of, oh, man, I hope. Uh, here I'm talking to a guy that knows everything about music. I don't know everything, but. But have you ever heard of, man. Yep. I'm so excited to see this because <laughs> I hope he has it. Mm. Now, it's the original. The lineup's changed. Mm. Have you ever heard of Little Super 7? Of course. Damn yes. it. Yes. Damn it. Yeah. I haven't heard. I, we used to listen uh-huh. to them early 2000s, I guess. Yeah, the Super 7, yeah. Such. That first album, oh, so yeah, good. Yeah, it was so good. So it was good. good. And then the lineup changed. I guess, uh, you know, Freddie had passed away. Yep. And then... Uh, Doug uh, Sam passed away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was... That's first album. Was Oscar Tellez. I think Oscar Tellez was in there. Was there any part of it? He may have been part of that. You know who else was in there that I really liked? Uh, Ruben Ramos. Yeah, Ruben Ramos, yeah. Uh, Ramos. You know, I, I was in... Uh, I think it was uh, Brownsville several years ago. They have the uh, Sombrero Fest. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm from a small town. I like to hang out with friends at the house, have some drinks, yell at each other's kids, make a fire. That's what I like. Mm-hmm. Well, we go down there. My wife loves the pachanga, you know, mm-hmm. and so do her family down there. Everything's a big party, mm-hmm. which is great. I remember going to Sombrero Fest, and I was like, man, this is this is all right. There, he had a brother. My, there was a cousin that was in the cook-off, and... And so I'm just kind of walking around. It, it was uh, like a larger version of our county fair. And uh, I was ready to go. When, when I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go, man. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a wrap. I'm not going to be any more fun. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and so I'm walking to the end, you know, just kind of checking it out. And uh, all of a sudden, the music starts. And it, it was uh, El Gato Negro, man. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, I, was, I looked at my wife and I was like, Ruben Ramos is here. Oh man, we're oh, after that. Oh, <laughs> no, we're going home after that, no, right? No, we're, sta- we're going to finish this <laughs> party. Yeah. We're going to finish this. <laughs> he does that. He does that yeah. to people. <laughs> he does that. He does that. So yeah. let me ask you this: with uh, with all the years that you've been in, you've probably done a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Who are some artists that you would like to maybe do some collaboration with? Is there anybody that you haven't done anything with that you would be interested in? You know, because you're also venturing into yeah, another space, the, right? Yeah, yeah Texas country, country Texas yeah. country. In Tejano, I th- you know what I want to do more of in Tejano. The one I didn't get to do anything was with probably Ellie, because she used to be a label mate of ours. She'd be one that I would want to do one with. But lately, I kind of want to do stuff with new artists mm. because I feel like, you know, as I as I'm aging and I'm, you know, my tenure's there. It's it's growing and growing. I mean, I've been in Tejano for what. 20 something years 20 what happened what's the math on that like year 27 years About 27 years right so i've been consistently for 27 years so it's you know i'm no longer the new guy i'm not in the middle anymore i'm almost the old guy now you know so you know i so i think that it, i feel that it's important to to collab with the younger artist for several reasons number one because it keeps you relevant and number two you're kind of helping them, right? It's not really, they're not, they're helping you because they're young and, you know, they're fresh. And they're like, oh, who's this? Oh, and that's cool. And they're hip and, or they're, you know, they're really talented. So I've kind of been kind of on that trip because not a lot of, not a lot of accordion players, singers do that, right? So I've kind of been on that kind of thing, you know, where I want to do more with the younger artists and kind of help them come up or, you know, be in, in some form, way or fashion, be able to mentor them or just kind of, you know, bring them into the scene. And, and I've been wanting to do more of that. That's what I've been wanting to do lately. That's, that's awesome because, yeah. and I, I use that as a lack of a better term, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not like engineering, right? Where you've got a ton of engineering firms and you've got a ton of engineers who come out of college what you guys do it there's so many there's so much talent and so many artists but the avenue to get there's so narrow and tight it is you know it is. and and it's like to have somebody i say this almost every other podcast the common thread when i talk to people is having a mentor yes you know yeah. and and again growing up in a small town mm-hmm. my dad was my mentor you yeah. know, but I never really ventured outside of that space, which I should have sought other types of mentors. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to me, I was kind of like, well, my dad knows everything I need to know, you know. Yeah. And but when you want to go into the music industry, when you go into, go into engineering, when you want to mm-hmm. go into anything, you need to seek a mentor in that area. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's 
there's so much good talent and it's 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 kind of nerve-wracking because uh, there's a lot of really good talented young folks that are going to spend the next 30 years being the local talent Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. And, and to be able to meet somebody and just Spend an hour, spend two hours. Hey, man, mm-hmm. you know, you're doing real well, but if you did this, you get on the rocket ship, mm-hmm. you know. And so, be, if somebody like you to, that's experienced these things, that have been there, that have seen the ups and downs, and know you, you it's like a vein of gold, right? Mm-hmm. You know, fi- getting on, becoming a successful artist, I'd imagine, is being is like finding that vein of gold, and it's so narrow, and it's under a mountain of just unvaluable rock and it's like to be able to share that and give that knowledge to people man that's that's amazing and that's something that's life-changing for folks absolutely the thing about being successful is that you never really feel like you are you know and i hear a lot of people say oh you're successful and i'm i'm just like really no i'm still got a long way to go and that's just kind of how we're built you know we always want i was watching a video about it was jim carrey was talking about he was playing around and he was like, hi, I'm two-time Golden Globe winner, Jim Carrey. He said, when I go to sleep, it's not just any kind of sleep. It's two-time Golden Globe winner, Jim Carrey sleep. He said, and do you know what two-time Glo- uh, Golden Globe winner Jim Carrey dreams about? And he there was like, what? He, said, he dreams of how he can become three-time Golden Globe winner, Jim Carrey. And it's so true. Yeah. Like, it's it's funny. But, you know, the irony is that it's true. You know, you never, you know, you know, 26 Tejano Music Awards, Tejano Hall of Famer, you know, uh, three Grammys, seven Grammy nominations. And it's like, I'm still like, man, you know, uh, even like Dave Ramsey, I went to see Dave Ramsey and he's like, I was still trying to make it. And he's been there for 30 years in, in radio broadcasting and he's syndicated all over the United States of America. And he's still like trying to, you know. Because you, ne- that's the, I would say that's the mark of a champion. I'm not calling myself a champion, but I'm saying that's what how people are. And when you're driven, you never consider yourself successful. And I, I think you have to remain humble. You stay in your humbleness. Because if you start saying, well, you know, I'm established, you know, I'm this and that. I mean, you know. Other people can say that if they want, but when you have to say it, but you stop growing when you do that, you know. Exactly. So I don't ever, have, I don't, I don't ever say that. I always say we're just always trying to expand our brand, you know, you know, you know, create a bigger footprint in what we do. And now we're in the point, where we're at the point where we're trying to, we're still doing what we're doing, but now we're kind of switching lanes. We're on thirty-five now. We're we're switching lanes, and and we're in almost four different lanes. We're doing Tejano. We're kind of jumping into the. Uh, to handle Texas country, we're doing, a, we're dipping our 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 feet into the polka market, and the Mexican market is still there for us, and they've been calling. They just the terms have not been agreed upon, but it, they're there, right? Yeah. They're there. They're like, like, come on, I'm like, well, I don't know, Wait, but so that's what you're doing. You're always expanding, you know. How do you, you know, how do you get your music in films? How do we get in films? When I want a Grammy, I want. I was like, man, I say I want to be in a movie. I want to do. I mean, there's so many. I mean, I still, I would still say I'm crazy. I'm like, man, I'll run for governor one day. Yeah. I just have to find the right campaign manager and like a good billion dollars. But I don't sure. see why not. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's yeah, one man. way to get a billion is become a politician. <laughs> and there you go. There you go. Well, you know, you know what's interesting, and you kind of touched on it earlier when you talked about getting the first Grammy. Yeah. It was we, and I'm guilty of this too, we don't realize how close we are to hitting a milestone because we're just taking the ride you know yeah. and and when you won that first one you're just taking a ride man mm-hmm. and you showed up and there it was and, mm-hmm. and, and it's you probably had to feel that you were in a good place but at the same time to you weren't showing up going hey i'm gonna go pick up this grammy i'll be back no, no, you no, know no, 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 no. And, and it's like that's where i think a lot of people that and it's scary right because i would imagine as an artist and, and whether it's music mm-hmm. or any other type of art you know, you put so much of yourself into it that you feel like there's a point where it's like, I'm just going to stop this and go get a job, you know? <laughs> but it's like, man, you you, yeah. you might be closer than what you realize. You yes. just got to keep taking that ride. Man. Yeah, there's another uh, coming. I forgot his name, man. He came on. He's talking about, I've seen a lot. We're talking about acting and actors. And I've seen, he said, you know, 
we don't know what it takes to make it, but we know that if you quit doing what you're doing, you're for sure not going to make right. it. And there's no, you know, there's another another um, saying is, you know, the, you know, what is it? Comparison is the, is the thief of joy. Mm. You know, you can't compare yourself to anybody else, you know, because I've been there where I'm, you know, even with Vida or with Eddie, you know, we started out the same place. And then this same band, like, just whew, went to the top, like, overnight. And we're still trying to go, you know. So you can't compare yourself. But, you know, there's like the guy from the X-Man, the guy that, I can't remember his name. Magneto. Mm -hmm. Magneto, that actor, whatever his name is. They're talking about him. Like, he had been an actor for a long, long time. And he didn't get recognized, recognized until he was in his 60s. Yeah. And because he's stuck in there. So it's, it's, a long, it's the long game, you know. And, and you can sit here and talk, talk about how successful I am. In my own mind, I'm still still trying to like i feel like if you know i haven't played on the moon yet you know so i'm still like nah i still got a ways to go I haven't played in germany yet so i still got a ways to go i haven't played in japan yet you're wasting or, time so you know you're wasting time. yeah so it's like that's why that's where i'm at that's where i'm at yeah like you know i love the festivals i love all that stuff but you know it's always been a goal of mine to play all over the world sure. not just you know that festival we have in selma what is the name of the big show what is it the the one that right uh, there the carnaval yeah, I know what you're talking in about. Because I go get a funnel cake in a corner. I haven't gone yet. <laughs> but the one of the directors goes to her kid goes to get Garden Ridge. Okay, okay. I found out, but I mean, but and so that's where I'm at in my head. Yeah, you know, USO tours, things like that. You know. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, let me ask you this: as somebody who's married to him and loves him very much, in where what would you like to see him accomplish next, Ooh. or or where would you like to see him take his career? Because yeah. you're just as involved as he is. You know? Well, yeah. so let me, before you start, which Vicky is actually the president of the record label. Vicky does everything. What's the name of the record label? Solstice, Solstice. Records. Okay. So she's been helping me since I went on my own. So oh, wow. she started doing merchandise when I was a Grupo Vida. And then uh, when I went on my own, uh, and I think I said something like, well, if we're going to do this, you're not just going to be... And that either one day, either the chula or the day, no, it's not either one. You're gonna work <laughs> if you're gonna do this with me. And but, 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 uh, okay. So anyway, she and then there's another whole other story to that. But so she does. She's done. She does everything but play accordion. And I'm talking about drive, load the load the the trailer, unload the trailer, hook the trailer, set up the accordions, wireless, payroll, taxes. Uh, you know. Babysit the band, you know, get the waters, uh, you know, dress the band, pictures for the band, how to dress the band, you know, how to treat the band, you know, kind of keeping, you know, we have like band rules, but then she brings in the corporate America side of it. Like, you know, you can't ask him if he does drugs. I'm like, I can't. Like, no, he can't. Like, damn. How are you going to know if you don't ask? <laughs> well, you can't by law. You can't by law. Oh, really? Oh, okay, okay. You can't by law, no. I mean, if you, when have you gone an interview with they ask you for drugs? They just drug test you. But they, they don't ask you. bring me in the ass, so they don't have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> right? So they, so she, she does. So she's, she's just as much as a, a part of it as I am. I'm kind of like the dancing chicken, but she's like the the brain behind she's, the. She's got the chicken feet. She got the chicken feet. <laughs> she's like, she's become this like mer merchandise mogul. We used to do these conventions, and I would be there singing, you know, saying hi to everybody. This last convention I went to in Las Vegas, nobody even paid attention to me. They were, like, talking to her, <laughs> buying merchandise. They're like, so are you Sunny? And then I'm, like, standing there like, really? Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead and answer the question, though. Well, <laughs> to see him just be happy in what he's doing, honestly, it's it has nothing to do with where he needs to go or how far he needs to go. It's just seeing him being happy in what he happy in what he does, because like he says, it's a business still, and the business side of, of it isn't as fun all the time. So it, it, there's always things that come and go and happen, and you you know go through it. But as long as he's happy doing it. Everything else just falls into place. Yeah. So where do you where did you learn to wear all these hats that he's talking about? You do that? is it just trial and error, or you know, do you have some sort of uh, a business or, or marketing background? Or no, is just, not at all. I was at a necessity. Yeah, a necessity. necessity. Um, I've mm -hmm. always been in sports. I've always been, you know, the leader of the group, kind of um, a quiet but you know get things done type person. Mm -hmm. And so when he left Vida, and he didn't know what was going to happen. I kind of was like, 
told him, hey, what are you going to do? What do we need to do to get you back on the road? Or are you going to continue to play or are you going to not play? No, you said, are you going to sit there and watch reruns all day long in movies? <laughs> or are you going to make a band? What are you going to do? Because you can't do that all damn day. Well, you know what's, you That's know what's what she told me, for real. You know real. what's funny is, is uh, I get, I get a, a uh, sense of... I don't know if you are very familiar with like Ozzy and his wife Sharon's story. You uh-huh. know? It was very similar where he was no longer in the band. Uh, now, granted, his was probably a more extreme case than yours, but uh-huh. you know he ended up locking himself in a hotel and ordering drugs and takeout. Yeah. And she showed oh, no, up. I, I get a dealer to my house. You get, you get, <laughs> <laughs> now, I Uber Uber drugs. Uber, 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 Uber drugs. They have Uber Eats. Uber Uber, Uber drugs. Uber, Uber drugs. Uber, Uber, Uber narcotics. But you know yeah. she did the same thing for him. You know it was like, yeah. hey, I'm going to help you get through this yeah. and she carried the role that you're doing you know mm-hmm. and so it, it's so interesting that that you know you're a very talented guy but in this conversation you're very lucky to have that support in that oh yeah that you know that base that she provides you yeah. know and that's that's a that's good that's gotta be not everybody has that i didn't yeah. i forgot to add that she does she records this she does all the social media all the recordings that i post on my on my instagram or my tiktok she's those are her recordings his, his oh, butt right. shaking yeah uh, i'm the one that yeah that actually done that, so. actually that viral video i did not like i'm like man that's not even a good angle vicky what were you thinking why don't you get and yeah, then i get thing, that all the time i'm like what, what are, were you why, doing why, why, where were you, were you, you what were you hey, doing you tell him Who's filmed a viral video near you? <laughs> All those videos All, that go viral. Yeah, so she she'd be there with two phones. Have you ever tried to hold two phones for an hour and a hour half? And, a half? No. and they, one was live and one was just recording. I'm like, how do you do that? And it's so steady. And uh, so she does that. But uh, you know, uh, you know, we may not always like each other, but we work well together. Yeah. You know, we work well together, and that, I can say that after 25 years, and I think we both agree on that. Yeah. You know. You know, just because we're just both very strong-willed people, you know, we have, we have strong, you know, characters, and you know that happens. And when you work together and you live together, it's gonna, they, they, they kind of overlap. You know, I sure. mean, I think we've had more fights over business decisions than we've actually had fights of, like, hey, you left your underwear on the floor. Like, we don't have those fights. We have no. I think we should release a single this time. We needed this right now, and well, you, you back know and forth. What's interesting is what in, what's interesting is, you know, you've got you've got what you what you do. You've got what you do, and it takes a lot out of both. Now you're both on the opposite ends, right? Mm-hmm. You're on stage singing. You're doing all the all the background stuff, but it takes a lot out of both of you guys. Mm-hmm. But at some point, it's it's like this this connective thing right mm-hmm. you've got what you're doing and you're putting yourself into it you're doing the same thing but at some point it's got to come back to, it's got to come together yes. mm-hmm. and if it doesn't come together the way she wants you're screwing up what she's got going on but if it doesn't come together the way you want you, she screws up what you got going on mm-hmm. so i could imagine there's got to be some some stressful conversations that you guys have we do have those yeah we, we have the those stressful conversations where they're like we we have to uh i am a I'm a doer, not a thinker. Like I just do. I can see that. I, I'm just, I just, I just do it. I'm like, hey, we need to do this. Okay, boom. What well, did you ask him? How much does it cost? No, but we're gonna do it. I was like, why? What's wrong? Well, you need to know how much it costs. I was like, yeah, but we gotta get it done. Well, yeah, but how much is it gonna cost? I don't know. He said he would be giving. He, he was my friend. He's giving me, giving me a deal. Yeah. But when you're a three-time Grammy winner, nobody gives you a deal, bro. Yeah. Nobody gives you a deal. Yeah. Nobody gives you a deal. Well, you know, everybody, and not to be stupid, but everybody thinks you're sitting on millions of dollars at home. No, know? it's and not. And it's like, that's not. that's not always the case. No, no. I mean, I, I live at a shoebox. I mean, I live, I live under the bridge. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah know, it's a nice bridge in Garden Ridge. It's a Ridge, nice bridge in Garden Ridge. <laughs> it's a nice one. I, they gotta, I got to drive around Garden Ridge. I can't <laughs> yeah. even go to yeah. Garden Ridge. <laughs> no, we, we, we've been so blessed. Uh, but, yeah, it's just those, those arguments. Yeah, you're, you're right. We've had those discussions where we're just... And it's funny because I think we've probably had more of those spats over the business side than we've had like yeah. personal stuff, like the petty yeah. marriage stuff, right? Yeah. You know. But yeah. I mean, like I said, again, I think it takes a lot out of both of you, you know, what mm-hmm. you guys do in this in this industry, you know. And, and, and on top of that, you yeah. got to go to Ingersoll Random. <laughs> you know, it, it, it does, you know, but I mean, I think it's, it's, I mean, I don't know if it's her passion. I know she does it because she loves me. But, uh, you know, it's a different lifestyle, right? So we don't 
exactly have a normal life. It's not better than anybody else's, but it's not exactly the same as everybody else's, right? So, yeah. you know, I do, I hate to admit, but sometimes, you know, we, we go places and, you know, my dad taught me a long time ago. He would, he would drill in my head and he said, he was an only child. He said, son, if you make friends everywhere you go, you will never be alone in life. And that's all I've ever done is make friends. Make friends. Whether we do business together or not is irrelevant. Yeah. We make friends everywhere we go. Because, the, you know, there, there's a saying, there's a um, there's a sales book, 10.1, the sales Bible. It says, all things being equal, most people prefer to do business with their friends. Right? All things being not so equal, people still prefer to do business with their friends. So... The moral of the story is, you know, you just make friends. And, and and that's how it is. I mean, I'm almost in that kind of situation right now where my friend opened up a recording studio. It's not the cheapest studio in the, in the city, True. but it's my friend's studio. Yeah. So what do you do when you have friends that are in business? You support your friends. Yeah. You have to. If you're a real friend and if you're a businessman, we're not doing compadre business. Yeah. We're not going to try to do that. I mean, that's... Well, you, you know, know I, think, I think that's where a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of people drop the ball man right because they go my buddy's got a meat market i'm gonna go get some cheap meat no and it's like hey man your buddy's got a meat market you need to go buy and pay full price yes so he can stay open yeah you exactly. know and and that's where i think a lot of people kind of miss that connection they think they think they got a hookup exactly you know, it's like hey man we're not playing hookup you know if, if you really care about me and you really want me to be successful you won't come asking for free tickets. Yeah, no. Yeah. You no. know? <laughs> no. His dad would not allow him to give him, you know, backstage entrance no. or nothing. He yeah. wanted to go to the front door. He was going to pay to see him play. Yeah. Yeah, my dad paid. That's... Yeah, he'd pay. Yeah. My dad would pay, and I would tell him, Dad, let me know when you're here so I can let you in the back. No, 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 no. I'm going to pay. I, I, you, I know you're getting paid. I want to pay to see you play. I'm like, Dad, but you're my dad. No. I'm going to pay to see you. So when people call me, like, asking for tickets, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Don't ever call me asking me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you know what? Up. I get it too, man. Are you listening? I, <laughs> I get it too. You know, I I, I, I get so where we can't get from. any free plans from you. you don't get no no free drafting from me. Hey, man. Uh, mm-hmm. No you know cat. It, free drafting. You know what? This is this is this is where I this is where I live in my in my head. And uh, you know, you talked about not being cocky. I'm super cocky. Man. Oh. And uh, uh, I've told I've mm-hmm. told people before. I'm like. I'm like, hey man, uh, I'm real expensive. I'm real expensive, and, <laughs> and it's funny because I tell him, I tell him because mm-hmm. nobody's gonna do it as good as I'm gonna do it. Ooh. You know, I, I I get to this point where mm-hmm. I get I I'm, I get a little OCD, you know. And it's funny because even even where I work right now, I'll do things, mm-hmm. and it's like I tell my wife, I'm like, nobody does it the way I do. Nobody's gonna nobody's gonna put themselves in in it as much as I'm going yeah. to. Yeah. So what I'm gonna give you. I'll either give it to you for free or I'm going to charge you too much because yeah. either I'm not going to be happy with it and you're not going to know that I'm not happy with it, but I'm not going to like it and you can have it. Yeah. You know, or I'm going to love it and I'm going to charge you shit out of you. One of the two. You're going to get it free or you're going to a lot of money. You can't give it no in between. There's no between. It sounds like me. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, no there's no gray area. There's, there's, no, gray there's no gray area. It sounds just like me. Yep. That's what I do. Exactly. Man, you, you know, I, I'm interested to see you where you're going to go with the Texas country stuff. Uh, how long have you been heading in that direction? You know what? It's what twenty years. Really, that long? Well, uh, people have been asking me for it. See, it's not a, it's not a like a, a trendy thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, back when I was at Texas Records, what year was that? What, what years were those? Two thousand five, six, two thousand six, yeah. seven. Two, yeah, two thousand and yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Texas Records. Yeah, but on yourself, by yourself. Well, with Vida. With Vida. Oh, with Vida. Yeah, that was with before Vida. then. Yeah, um, before then. 2000. Yeah, 2000. So people have been asking me. People have always said, Sonny, we love what you do, but we wish we understood what you said. Because our record label, Texas Records, was two white guys. Mm-hmm. No offense, white people. Uh, I love white people. So I gr- I'm from New Braunfels, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you ain't white, you ain't right. Yeah. So that's what we believe in. A lot so. of Germans. I mean, it's all Trump country, baby. A lot of Germans. Come, come on now. Yeah, he's, so, winning, he's winning next election. He is. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know he is. So, you know, and, and so it's a, it's kind of a, a um, it's a call to action. You know, we, people have been asking me, you know, when we were Vida, we did a thing with Dixie Chicks. We did a thing for the Country Thunder. And same thing, people. Because, I, I, you know, we did a, the thing with the Dixie Chicks. I knew Emily Robeson and Charlie Robeson. May he rest in peace. 
And people would always say, man, we love what you do. We just wish we knew what you were singing. And so I've kind of been tread that going that way. I've been talking about it. I kind of recorded with like Charlie Robeson. I've recorded with uh, uh, Robert Rodriguez. I've recorded with uh, Rick, Rick Orozco. They're all, you know, Texas country guys. And, uh, but it wasn't until like a few years ago when it started really becoming a reality. Where well, I start it's huge right now, man. Well, and you're in the you're in the meat of this yeah, Texas country scene. It, it really is. Right now it's like the it seems like it's just really popping right now. And and the thing is, it started happening when I started to get in with Abe, right? Abe Mack, my yeah. friend Abe Mack. I've just, seen you post some videos. He's really talented. He's, he's so talented. Oh my gosh, yeah. dude. Amazing he's songwriter. Amazing, bro. I love that. I'm like his biggest fan. Like I'm I fangirl with that guy. I'm like yeah. I listen to his album, like his new album, Freight. Oh, wow. Freight Train Heart, and uh, I love that album. Well, I, I noticed your eye color changed when you said his name. I did. I'm like, watch <laughs> yeah, out, girl. Yeah, he's my hall pass. He's, he's my hall pass. pass. <laughs> he's my hall pass. You know, and and, and and so, you know, people, so it's kind of been in the works, and then not too long, I started reaching out to, like, my friends from BMI, Mitch Ballard. Like, I've, I've kind of been connecting with songwriters, kind of make, taking the steps, right? I'm The way I see it is like this. You know, I'm not in the Texas country market. So what I wanted to do was I'm going to seek out people that are in the market and collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. So you're a songwriter. Okay, come here. Let's work together. You're a producer. Come here. Let's work together. Because I really feel like if you try to go into a market that you're not really a a part of, like cold turkey, Mm -hmm. without anybody else. Sure. It's like like your lay is on. You get somebody that, like, hey, this... You know, you 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 have the ladies on from another tribe. Bring you in. Yeah. Oh, did I miss your mic? Oh no. no you bring it. You know, bring you in. Like okay. So I started getting with Abe Mac, and then I ended up performing at the T3R, and so it's kind of been in the works for for. I've been talking about it for years, right? Yeah, and you've laid down a few tracks on yeah. different albums. Um, yeah, he's I've, got his own. Yeah, I've done. Re- I've read. I've covered some. You know, like um, Augie Myers. Augie, you know, I know Augie oh, yeah. Myers. And I've covered some Augie Myers, and uh, I think I think they may have been old some of his old songs. So I've always kind of been interested in it. I just again an example of fearful of success, right? Kind of been like, like, well, let me see, and no, I don't know. And then until like this, it's funny that you say that, man, because with all your success. You still get that anxiety of, yeah, of yeah. jumping into something new, and it's like to me, yeah. I, I'm so cocky. I, I, tell, I always tell everybody, <laughs> so I always good. tell everybody, I have way more self esteem, more way more self esteem than I deserve. Yeah. But it's like with your successes, you still mm-hmm. get a little anxious about it. That's it. I mean, yeah, you have you, you know, because I know what it's like. Because I, so I, as a Tejano artist, like if you were to tell me, oh, I'm going to be a Tejano artist. Oh, really? Are you? I said. How are you going to do that? You know, because I'm going to size you up now. I'm going to. Well, I want to see how deep your bench is. I want to see how far you go back. I want to see if you know your history. So I know that other people would do that to me if I'm coming into sure. a new market. Well, you don't want to come off as a poser, right? You don't want exactly. to. You don't want to show up like, hey, I've had the success over here. So I'm going to do it over here. Except me. No, in this yeah. area, no, and, and that's not exa- exactly. So I just wanted to. So that's why I started, you know, talking to reach out, reaching out to my friends. And the funny thing is that I've had a lot of friends in the Texas market, and I never really had we had anything in common. And that's not until I started talking about doing it more. Abe Mack was kind of the guy that kind of pushed me over the edge. You know, I was kind of standing at the edge of the cliff, and I'm like, I don't know, Abe, I don't know. And he he wrote a song for me. Well, he wrote a song that I liked, and he said, "You like this song?" I said, "Yeah, I do." I said, you want to record it? You want to try to track it? Let's do like a dummy track. Let's see how it sounds. And it's a song called Womanizer. We haven't released it yet, but it's it's kind of tracked already. I like already. it already. Just I know. The title. <laughs> the title is Womanizer. It's reversed, though. She's the one. Oh, no. She's yeah. the one. She's the one. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's like a Texas. Hard, that's a heartbreaker. It's like a Texas country <laughs> version of, I'm in love. I fell in love with the stripper. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of shit. So, um you know, he and he kind of guided me. He came to the house. We recorded the track. It was a dummy track, so it was just you know, we used the, like a, a mic and an iPhone and an iRig and something just to get it, just to you know capture it. And he kind of guided me. I said, I want you to guide me. I want you to treat me. Don't treat me like I'm a Grammy. Just treat me like you would anybody else. Right. Guide me through the track. Like vocal guide me. Like show me what I'm doing wrong. What do you think? You know, guide me. You know, direct me. 
Like, you know, you, I'm giving you all the reins. You just do what you think. And after that, man, he's, he was, you know, like, man, I, I really like what you're doing. I like your voice. It, now I know how you like this song. It fit me. And, and he kind of gave me the confidence that I was like, you know what? I can do this. This is, this is, this is going to be fun. And it, I, I have to thank him for that because I, and I've told him before, I've, I've told him, you know, I really, you know, I thank you for that. You kind of, you know, push me and you, know, you kind of like, I'm like, I don't know. No, no, no get on. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. And, and Sometimes so now, that's what it takes. Yeah. And so now I'm like, man, I, it, it's, it's now I'm real comfortable. So when I, you know, performed at the T3R Awards with AJ Vallejo and all that, I just, it took off from there. And it, the, the funny story, the funny thing is, dude, is like one of the biggest Texas country artists in Texas country is her, her second husband. Oh, really? Yeah, her other yeah. husband, Rico. Rico they Gun made that arrangement. Rico, oh, yeah. Rico Gonzalez is the lead singer for Kimfo. He looks just like me, but he plays fiddle. Yeah. He's, he's chubby. Well, I thought you were going to say uh, Tim McGraw. No, not Tim McGraw. No, that's, <laughs> no, no, no. that's her pat hall pass. Okay. Oh, that's her second <laughs> We're husband. not trying to commit. Yeah. To yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. no. So, and, and hey, he looked good in that 1863 or He did, right? yeah. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. No, it's just between us. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't know. It's between me and Vicky. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, you know, and, and so I show up to these T3R Awards in March, last March, and I show up with a beard. You know, it's me. But if you see Ricky and I together, we look like brothers, right? Yeah. Um, and so people were, I thought, I felt like I was at, I knew I was at the T3R, but I felt like I was at the Tejano Music Awards because everybody kept coming up to me and saying hi. And they're like, man, you'd kicked ass and wherever. I was like, where? I said, when did you see me play? like, and they started, they thought I was Rico. I'm like, like, he no. said, shut up, we're selling, we're selling t-shirts <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> said, Don't say nothing. Don't say nice. yeah. I was like, man, that's it. So, you know, it's just, you know, and it was so surreal. And and so not a lot of people know that my lucky number is 13. Mm. Okay. So it was the 13th annual. That's kind of my favorite number, by the way. Dude, yeah. So yeah. it was the 13th, 13th annual T3R Awards. Okay. We're sitting at table 113. Oh, wow. And I got to shake so many hands because they thought I was Rico at first. So automatically, they, they what? go with it, man. They, <laughs> they, they automatically embraced me, right? Because yeah. I look familiar. I look familiar to them. They're like, man, we like you already because you look like Rico. Even though he's younger than me, but regardless. And, and I'm way more talented than that and guy. And probably better looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm better looking and yeah. better, every, better at everything. Every, yeah. You name it, I'm better at him than that. Maybe not fiddle. Maybe not the fiddle. I don't know. I mean, I could, I could, I could fake the fiddle. Give you two weeks, I guarantee you're on par. Yeah, give me a week. Give me a week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and and so it was just surreal, dude. And I just, and I feel, it was just such a blessing. It was so amazing to be part of that, and I and, and it was just like we had so much fun. But to answer your question, it's been a few years that we've been talking about it. But now it's really happening. You know, I was actually with my producer today, and uh, it's real close to releasing a new, a new single. We've already wrote, we wrote two songs. We have a cover that we we recorded, but it's it's uh, exciting, you know. And we did our first gig last year with uh, um, Texas ninety nine. It's just official Texas Country Station. They booked us at an, like uh, this legendary hall, the the Western the what's it the Western, the Western Cowboy the Westerner. Or is that one? Or it's it in Mahia. Mah okay. Mahia. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was just, and I just, it's just, I don't even know how to explain it. Well, it's got to be, a, uh, it's got to be a rejuvenation in you, right? Well, it is. Because it's a whole new, well, whole new, it is. Similar ball game, but it's a whole different. It's a whole different crew. The thing is that I, I, I almost feel like my friend uh, Corliss uh, McAllister, she's an, an online personality. And and I get overwhelmed. Like I, I could, I just break into tears for no reason. Like I'm just like think about what I what I'm doing, what's happening, and and she says that I suffer from imposter syndrome. And what's imposter syndrome? She's like, it, it, imposter syndrome is something where you where you you're in a place where you always feel like you don't really deserve it, but you're there. Mm -hmm. But I think it's part of being living in your humility, right? As arrogant as people think I am, because I'm so sometimes I'm quiet or I'm behind the scenes. But it's just, you know, I'm just, it's too much. Sure. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like all these people, like in my life, you know, that are helping me, you know, they're, they don't have to help me. They don't need to help me. They don't get anything out of helping me, but they help me. And so it's overwhelming to me. And so I'm like always in the, always like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe we're like next year we're performing. Like I'm performing at the T3R. 
the award show that I attended, now I'm presenting and I'm performing. That's awesome. So, man. And you know how many artists wish they could be doing that? That are already in the business of Texas country. And here is this little freaking short, fat Mexican freaking asshole showing up and like, do, do, do. Oh, I'm going to play it. I'm going to do that. So I feel I feel a little guilty. You know, I feel like, man, this is too much. This is. Yeah, but you know what? I, I, I get I get the feeling that you're describing. But I, I also get the feeling that you're such a purist that mm. even if you're in a new avenue, uh, and I've seen you talk to to Alec the other day. You know, mm-hmm. you talked about when you go into when you go into the music industry or whatever yeah. you're doing, you you go and learn everything you can about it. Yeah, you study it, you learn it, you become a you do. a scholar of it, and yeah. it's like so. I get where you're going, and and I I totally I would probably feel the same way, but I get the feeling that you would do it justice because that's your personality. You know, you're not gonna show up and just be like, "Hey, you know, I'm here. <laughs> you love me." You know, yeah, uh, you yeah. may tell people that, yeah, no. but you're gonna do your work. You're gonna do your legwork, yeah. and you're gonna do it justice. I man. mean, I I do study it. I've been studying. I'm still always studying it, and I've been you know researching, and that's kind of how I found out a bunch of different like. Because in any and I I and I think my theories I should write a book about this because I think in any business if you want to get into that business number one you figure out who are the movers and shakers in that business who are the influencers in that business okay who are the top sellers in that business and then you just I learned a long time ago if you surround yourself with people that you want to be like mm-hmm. you'll become that. But when you become the biggest, most important person in that room, you know what? It's time it's to go to another room. Time to go to another room. So I've learned that. you know. So when I, when I looked at the Texas country thing, I'm like, oh, so let's see. What are, what are these organizations? Oh, there's a T3Rs. I told her, hey, there's a T3Rs. I, I wonder what that's about. Let me look at that. And then, I, you know, and then it just so happened at the same time, Steve Trevino said, hey, you need to talk to the AJ, AJ Balejo. And he happened to be the producer of that award show, mm-hmm. so it kind of like all came together. But not only because I was started doing doing research and reached out to my friends, Mitch Ballard from BMI, all these different people. But I guess if I hadn't done that, maybe I wouldn't have been able to open those doors. You know, yeah. I mean, I didn't open them. I just kind of like knocked well, on them. That's interesting. And, and I'll, I'll ask you the same question, but because I got your answer now. Yeah. But it's like that's interesting because a lot of times I find myself in a position where I don't even know where to start or I don't know what I don't know. Yeah, you know? of course not. And it's like, yeah. it's, you know, to hear you going, yeah. okay, well, I find somebody that, that I want to emulate and yeah. then I see what they're doing. So yeah. like for you, where you kind of got thrown into this from scratch, you know, how did you figure out the things that you didn't know? Oh, I'm still trying to figure it out. Mm. I'm just trying it's trial to, and error. Kind trial of and error, trying to go mm. by... Follow him. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like whatever he's trying to do, how can I help? And I look up things too, trying to figure out what needs to be done, what groups he needs to, you know, be a part of. Where do I get a membership for him? What do I do this or where do I do that? It's it's the little things, but it's always learning more so than anything else. I mean, if you don't look for it, then it's not gonna come to you. Yeah. So if you start researching it and looking up what organizations are out there, what, you know, festivals are out there, what, you know, different people different avenues then that's the only way to to know what's going to happen that's yeah. interesting how do, how do you mm. deal how do you guys deal with rejection i what's I, that? I would imagine it's less now i mean but i, I would think there's got to be some festivals that you would like to play but maybe they're already booked maybe they say hey i don't like your sound you know you even talked about in the mm-hmm. beginning how mm-hmm. you were kind of a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a lot of rock and roll. Yeah, you know, there had to be in the earlier early days rejection. Was it just a matter we, of, hey, this is my dream, and I'm going to continue, or did yeah. you have did you have a lot you of rejection? No, go ahead. I mean, I, I think we deal. I don't. So first, I don't look at it that way. I look at those things as they're not ready for us. You know, they're not ready for this because a lot of people don't understand what we do. They don't get it. Um, in the 90s, they did get it because it was brand new, right? They're like, and we were with the big record label and we had a lot of weight behind us. But then things changed, right? And now, right now, we're in a time where 
we live in the you know uh, intocable you know duelos you know uh, palominos kind of you know secreto what uh, what is that the group name uh, the one that they're, uh, what, they, what do they do I forgot they're on they were on the Jimmy Kimmel show they were, they were, they were, Frontera, you know, mm. you know, we live in that. That is trending. Okay, we call that trending. How, so, are, how are those old? Well, I feel like those older groups. Yeah. If they're trending now, that's been a long road. Well, it, it has been, but the thing is, what, what I mean is like, so they're not. Sometimes these festivals are not ready for us, and that's how I to answer your question. I don't really, I don't really look at it as rejection. I just look at it as they're not ready for us. You gotcha. know, they're not ready for what we do. They don't kind. Of, they don't quite grasp what we do, right? And and I don't know that they ever will. And sometimes there's politics involved, right? And so, you know, we go for the quality qu- quality versus the quantity, right? You know, could I beg to get in those gigs? So could I like could I work myself in there for like the low low price? I probably could, but you know, they're not gonna break the bank. They're not gonna break the bank. They really aren't. And at the end, at the end of the day, the way I've kept a band for so long is by choosing the quality where you're wanted, where they accept you, where they embrace you, because they're going to treat you a lot better. Now, if you get into if you if you if you low bid yourself into a gig that you really want to get into, they're not going to treat you great. They're not gonna they're not gonna roll out the red carpet for you. They're going to treat you like a what is was it what the the five dollar hook or whatever you know yeah they're not gonna treat you well they have good personalities they have <laughs> they're not gonna treat you well. they're not gonna treat you well and so we we go for the the quality versus the quantity right yeah. and and we so we choose and pick where we want to play and and there's some like you know there's you know like we we were gonna do like the convention town convention just came out the 20th year anniversary i've been playing that convention for many years i haven't played it in about four years about three. Three, three or four. four years, right? They didn't call us this year, right? It's not rejection because you have to put yourself in the in the shoes of the producer of the award show. So I'm probably one of the artists that have been I'm probably one of the artists that have that, that's that's been there the most. You know, there there are a few select of us that have been there many, many years just over and over. In some way, form or fashion, we're involved, right? So I understand. So I think you have to understand business. And you have to have kind of a grasp of how they would, in their mind. I mean, because most artists, what they want to play every year. I don't want to play every year. Sure. I don't want to play every year. I don't not want to well, play. I every think year. people would would start ignoring, yeah, a, a group that's there all the time. You know, yeah. it's like when uh, when uh, Brooks and Dunn comes to the, the rodeo every year. You know, it's yeah. like they're amazing. Yeah. But you know, after a while, you've seen them seven, eight, nine times. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Kind of yeah. Like, well, there's no real excitement. You know, it's, yeah. there's nothing new coming out. It, you know, yeah, you want to you want to leave them wanting you a little bit. Yeah, so, so you, you gotta. You that's know. what I do to my wife's primas. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, so we, we, that's how we handled it. We just kind of yeah, they're not ready for us. Hey, it's not this year. You know, this year we could we were I had talked to the producers and say, hey, are you want me to play? I heard you want me to play, but if not, let me know because it's my anniversary that weekend, and we're going to Cabo if we don't play. And I really wanted to come, go to Cabo anyway, so. She, I kinda, she's, she's going to Cabo anyway, right? Yeah, I'm she's going. To, I know. She already booked everything. Kids it's and I are book. gone. They're going regardless, so. I mean, but I, I'm taking along with them. <laughs> I'm taking along with them. When is your anniversary? July 13th. July 13th. Okay. So you like 13. So 20, that'll be 26 years. Well, well no, married is Mar- 22. Married 22, 22 gotcha. and yeah. Together, 25. Well, let me ask you this. You're, uh, you talked about the record label, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you, how many artists do you have on there? Is it you or do you have artists on there right we now? We just have us right now. Okay. We, we're, I don't feel like we're really ready for that yet. But I keep saying when I get older, I don't know. Because I know what I know what is, I know what I would expect from my record label, mm-hmm. you know. But maybe in, I think maybe in three more years, once we, I, I would like to build like a, a small studio and then be able to record, you know, some bands in there and stuff like that. Then we could re- kind of, more handle that you know and i mean i guess i could sub but i think you know we, we'd, we'd wait wait you know because i just want to be in a better place yeah you know i guess you'd be able to provide a better service to the artist and whatnot i just want to i want to I wanna make sure i take care of them right, right. I, I couldn't with the clear conscience you know so, oh yeah here and, and they they have to do 
it's it's supposed to be a partnership, right? You know, but a lot of artists don't know. So I mean, it depends on who what the art, the artist it is. You know, me and Eddie talked about doing something. You know, but he's still, you know, doing his thing. So maybe maybe in a few more years, maybe in maybe in twenty more years, you know, I'll sign him. But you know, it's it's um, we haven't had any, we haven't had anybody. It's just us right now. But okay. it's I I always say it was you know my oldest daughter she sings right. So she's maybe a candidate, like maybe we would do something like her and, and I would be. she's the one in the mariachi group? She's the one in the mariachi group. What is it, a uh, Comparas de America? Well, she doesn't play with them. She sat okay. in with them. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and... and Because uh, they're big time, man. Uh, they're big time, but yeah. my, my daughter kind of plays with different groups, right? And uh, so... What is, her, what is her specialty? My daughter? Yeah. She's a singer. Singer, gotcha. First and foremost, she's a singer. So she's, a, you know, she's more of a singer than a guitar player. But uh, she's really good. She's really great, and and not because she's my daughter. I think it. You know, I always say, and uh, I always tell my, you know, all my kids. I said, man, would you rather me tell you exactly and critique you like just raw, or your friends? I think you rather hear from me because your friends are going to be. They are not going to have any filter. Yeah. So you know, but no, she's really, really, really good. And the only thing that she's not social media savvy for being twenty five. She's not into social media as much as you would one would think. Yeah, and it always it, it always works out that way. The people that are talented want nothing to do with social media, and the cochinas that are showing their teachers in nalgas, they're all over social media. Yeah, that have zero talent. Yeah, I mean, I, I like them. I hit, I put the heart out of support. <laughs> out of support, you know. But but I mean, I yeah, I yeah. mean. They don't have no talent. They no, have no, no talent. talent. Yeah, they have no talent. Yeah. But uh, I'm trying. To I mean, that's a talent. It's a talent. It's a, talent. It's, a talent. it's a different kind of talent, but it's a talent. Well, you know, I, I think when you're when you're really a talented artist, and this is coming from somebody who is not a talented artist, <laughs> but I think when you're really a talented artist, you become, and here I am telling a talented artist, you become obsessed with that skill because you're honing it. You know, and and again, it's not like me going working nine to five at the engineering firm, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a person opening themselves up yeah. to to everybody, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. And so scrutiny is brutal, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody tells me I'm terrible at work, I'm I'll be here till five. You know? <laughs> but but when somebody tells you that that you know, and and they're being constructive, right? Some yeah. some people are assholes, but when they're being yeah. constructive. You've got to really be a strong person to, mm -hmm. to receive that constructive criticism and understand it's coming from a good place. Yeah. Because I spent so much of myself producing this mm -hmm. and it wasn't what I thought it was. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, it's scary. So, it makes sense that she's not involved with all the other stuff, you know, because she's so focused on her talent, her her, her trade. So well, I mean, I, you know, and I get that. I get that. The, 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 prob the thing is, is that I don't use the words... Unfortunately, I use the words as, as it turns out, as it turns out, if you want to move the chains, you have to be on social media. Yeah. Like, I didn't sign up for the podcasting and social media, TikTok and Facebook. Like, I'm a musician. I'm yeah. a creator of music. I'm not, cre I'm not a creator of content. Well, now I am, mm -hmm. right? Because it is creative But, you know, um, it's just part of what we do now. You know, there's no way out of it. If you want to be, I wouldn't say successful, but if you want to prosper, you know, and you want to grow your brand, you know, because success is different for everybody, right? You know, you have to be on social media. And so with my daughter, I keep telling her. I'm waiting for your TikToks. Where you at? What's going on? And she posts these like very vague things. Like I'm like this. She's like my dad was me on TikTok. Yeah, like <laughs> she, yeah, she'll do something. I'm like, like what is this? Like I want, I want to see you talking. I want to know about you. I want to know what you do. And my daughter's, oh, she's gorgeous. She's so beautiful. And it's and not just because she's my daughter, but you know she is gorgeous and talented. And I'm like, you need to get on social media because nobody signs. Artists that have less than a million views, a million followers. That's just how it is. I heard that. You know what? I heard that the other yeah, day. It's true. And, and man, that's a shitty place to be. 
It, it, it was. It, it's very true. I actually heard Steve Trevino tell me that today. He told it to everybody. He was in the room with the we're having the meeting. He says, "Yeah, record label don't sign anybody if you have uh, if you don't have a million view, a million followers." And then Alex, then Alex, uh, Mike said, "Well, if you have a million followers, why would you want to give me get signed? Because you have you <laughs> selling." Yeah. I was like, "Well, that's true too." Yeah. So I mean, but I always use Roy Orbison, man. Could you imagine if Roy I, Orbison hit the scene this year? Oh my gosh! Yeah. He never he's such a talent. He's such talent. a great voice, yeah, such a yeah. great musician. Ugly as hell, you know. <laughs> What's wrong with him? What, you don't hey like him? man, you don't like him? He was a rough looking buddy Holly. Oh, <laughs> I mean, but amazing talent. Amazing but, talent. But with what, what with what gets eyes today? Yeah, well, you know, yeah. it's hard for amazing talent to to yeah. make those steps. I mean, forward. there we have Lizzo. You yeah, have Lizzo. Yeah, but she can play the flute. She can play the which flute. flute? <laughs> which flute are we All talking about? All kinds of flutes. Oh, I mean, I've been called Lizzo del Norte. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll have to see him play, that play the flute. <laughs> I've been called a lot of names. A lot of names. Chris, yeah. the Mexican Chris Farley. Uh, what is it on? Uh, uh, Mantecon. Uh, Panzanocha. <laughs> It's We're great. Creative. <laughs> I love it. It's that. so cool. Yeah, my, my brother used to call me something with menudo. I forgot how he said it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, and it's it's all good for the it's good for your algorithms. Yeah. It really is. And so I, 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 I welcome all the hate all the time. Yeah. I get a kick out of it. Do, do your uh, I guess maybe not the little ones, but do your do your children kind of see some of that hate? And do they get it, or do they? Is, do they kind of? Does it bother them a little bit when somebody's, you know, less, I guess, supportive of you? Uh, I don't, lack of better. They don't it. pay attention or see it, but uh, I think they don't like the what you the the whole. Because didn't Jalen used to say like, "Why do my friends ask me about dad?" Oh yeah. She, my daughter didn't like that. She didn't like that. Her friends and their parents know that he's on TikTok and oh. that. He's being followed, and they're watching them. <laughs> yeah, she, why, do, why do my friends ask him about you? I'm like, I don't like when they do that. I'm like, because her friends know me. Because number one, I volunteer at school. Sure, I'm a watchdog. I'm on the. P, well, I used to be on the PTA. I haven't signed up this year for. I should, I should have signed up PTA, and I've done career day. I played for the like the whole second grade one year. I oh this past year I played with the, the whole third grade. No, this is, that was second grade last. Second year. grade. I played in front of the whole like for the. The, all the kids and yeah. dude, I was so nervous for that show, and uh, you he know, was, he was really I nervous. was really I, nervous. Dude. Hey man, little things. ones make me nervous too. They're the ones that go, man, you're fat. <laughs> 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 no, I was just really nervous because that's like, believe it or not, dude. Because you know, there was a time where Tejano and what we do in the schools was like what they didn't get it. They didn't understand. They didn't. They didn't accept it. And now, to like, you know, I know the music teachers and the principals and the parents, and they're like, "Hey, can you do career day? Like, that's like huge, dude." Because I used to kind of hide it from people. Yeah, I used to never really talk about it. Like, oh, you know, I I never told anybody. You know, everybody's. You know, you know, they used to know me as you know Mario, and that's my legal name, Mario. You know, and and now, you know, maybe what. Ten years ago, I started using my real, like my nickname all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I used to always be Mario. Like, oh, that's Mario. Like, who the fuck? Who's Mario? So to to be able to you know play and be in career day and play your music or be asked to be a part of like in a and your local community, your nowadays. local community, your yeah. educational system, that was a huge thing for me. It really, really was. You you would think that. I was playing at the Grammys or something, but I was so nervous to play in front of all and all my neighbors and all my kids' as parents are they're all well to do, man. This is Garden Ridge. This ain't, you know. I know I gotta drive the long way to go home. <laughs> <laughs> this is Garden Ridge, bro. Hey, you know? when, when I told <laughs> when I told him I lived in Selma, I heard him go, Ugh. Oh. Ooh, <laughs> Selma. Ooh. He said, You're a poor area. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's the other you're side of the bridge, ghetto. right? Oh, 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 you're slumming. You're slumming. You're slumming. He's like, you're on the other side of the Walmart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 you're on the side. <laughs> Let me ask you this, man. 
before we wrap up, uh, uh, there's a few things I also yeah, want to know. Do, yeah. But I want to ask you this. Sure. When, now, I don't want to hear fatherly stuff. Okay. Because that's, that's a no-brainer. <clears throat> yeah, okay. But when you're 88 years old, you're sitting mm. on the porch, the grandbabies mm. are already grown up, and you're reflecting on your professional career. Uh-huh. What do you hope you can look back on and be confident in that you did? Oh, you know, what I want to look back on, you know, I think you want to know you made your mark, you know, you know, you want, you want to know you made your mark. You want to know that you had some influence and I feel that you would want to have your successors be successful because of what you taught them. I think that's what I would want, you yeah. know. I think that's what I would want because, you know, I I, I already now at this stage in the I mean, at this stage in the game I've been what doing this for twenty five. How many years did you say? Twenty nine years. Twenty seven. Yeah, not twenty seven. Twenty seven years. I listen. I already I already know in this twenty seven years, and I've known this for a while. And the reason I say I know, and 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 I say it from the most humble place in my heart. You know, there's a lot of artists. And a lot of singers in Tejano and Norteño and country and rock. and But when you get little kids and adults that emulate you, like they make videos and they're like pretending to be you, you know you've made your mark. You really know you've made your mark. Because I don't see people pretending to be Emilio. I don't. I see people pretending to be Selena. I don't see people pretending to be, to, pretending to be you know, Ricky Munoz or... Gary Hobbs, or, uh, but I see people pretending to be Sunny Salsella, and that's like a, the biggest compliment you could pay anybody. So I know, and, and I really appreciate it, but I think that's, that's, so to see young artists come up and, you know, that come up knowing that, you know, or that are influenced by you, but that are successful, I think that's what you want to see. You know. I, I like that answer uh, yeah. because I was going to ask you in lieu of the, the awards mm -hmm. and in your answer, that supersedes your awards. Yeah. The awards are nice. You know, the, the <clears> accolades <throat> are great. Yeah. But when you can see somebody wanting to emulate you, like maybe when you were a kid, you wanted to emulate other people. Yeah. You know, that... That supersedes the awards. You know, the oh, awards yeah. are going to get dusty on the shelf, and, and in 30 <clears throat> years, you're yeah, going to go, yeah. you know, there's been a lot of uh, uh, Grammys that have gone out since. Yeah. You know? yeah absolutely. But when yeah. you can look back and see somebody air humping on accordion, <laughs> we know who that is. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was in, in, in um, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. And a little, what, three years old? I like that she already knows this. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? She was, was he three years old? Yeah, he's about three. Three years old, dude. Three really? years old, dude. Three, three years old. Three years old. Had his accordion. Had like a little wireless kind of thing. His gloves. He had his, his gloves. He had no his kidding. Sunglasses. Dude. Bro, really. And this has been happening for my whole, like, for the past 20 That's years. That's got to make you emotional, man. It does. I get emotional now. Like, it, it's... I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, I don't even know what to say, dude. It's just, it's next level, man. It's yeah. just, it's overwhelming. Uh, it's, it's, it's the biggest form of flattery. It's so flattering. And, and it's like, wow, man. It's like, how did, you know, I didn't plan it that way. I didn't, I didn't set out to, you know, when I first started playing accordion, which I never liked the accordion to begin with, I didn't set out to, oh, I'm going to be like this, you know, influential accordion player, you know, in the Tejano industry or in the, and now it's not even in the Tejano, it's in the accordion industry because, you know, my, my brand has reached, you know, Norteño groups like La Maquina de Norteña, you know, they're like one of the biggest groups in Norteño. And he, Rory has told me like, you know, you influenced me. I was like, wow. You know, guys in Texas country, uh, What's his name? Dave, David, um, Dave Perez, uh, the accordion player for uh, the Texas Brothers. They're in Texas country, really doing well. Man, you influenced me. When I got out of the Marines, I heard your album. I was like, wow. 
so you're touching you know even people from like according from japan and like, I'm like what? i didn't plan it that way i yeah. never planned it that way that was not part of my plan nobody sets out to oh i'm gonna influence a whole generation of recording players like no it just it just happened that way that's the beautiful thing about when that happens, man. Right. Because it didn't, it comes from a pure place. Yeah. It, it doesn't come from, hey, I'm going to, I think so many people who want to be popular and influential and all that good stuff, especially nowadays, they look at formats and algorithms and they go, okay, well, what, what game do I have to play to get there? Yeah. But when you can achieve those things just by being passionate in, in, in exploring your talent. Yeah. It's the game changer. Man. Oh, dude, it's just, it's, it's. I don't. Know, I mean, you've seen it happen. I mean, I mean, it's, it's just yeah. It's it's been happening for years now. For years, yeah. there's yes. an accordion player was he in Michigan? Yeah. Um, would get his gloves, mm. and play with the gloves, and um, had hats made exactly like Sonny's. Yeah. I mean, to That's the cool, T. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy to see, but it's crazy. I mean, I I remember all the way back to night the nineties. When Eddie and I were, you know, we'd go to like these clubs. We were we were single at the time, and we would go. I think Jay Perez was playing, and uh, even Jay Perez, you know, he they had a part of the show where the accordion player would play a song, and and they were doing the triplets like, you know, and I was like, you know, and me, Eddie, me and Eddie looked at each other like, hmm, that's interesting. Like that was like a page out of our playbook. Yeah. But Jay Perez was doing it back in the nineties, and and I don't think he does it anymore. But you know, you you know, you you've made your mark, and it's just, dude, it was just to try something new. That's all it was. It wasn't. I told my dad, "Well, I want to try something new. I want to try it and see how it goes." I kind of felt bad because I was leaving my dad's conjunto. You know, I felt like I was betraying my dad. You know, and, you know, he's my dad. Yeah. And he's no, no, go ahead, Mijo, try it out. And I tried it out, and then we recorded, and then it's like. Just like a rocket ship, dude. You know that's awesome that your dad your dad told you that because for for a lot of folks, you know they they want yeah. to they they want to make their father proud, and it's important yeah. for a father. I don't have kids, so here I am telling uh, my father. Yeah. But to me, it's important for a father to recognize the ambitions of their children to be able to do. Yeah. And sounding very stupid. But in order to set them free, yeah. right? Go do what you want to do. I know you want to make me proud, but go do what you want to do. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, he was, you know, my dad was, you know, my dad was. What was your dad's name? Mario. Mario. What, I'm, I'm the third. Junior. So or he third. Was, I'm the third. So he was always supportive. And, and, and the thing is that he always taught me that, you know, you, he, I, I, I mean, my dad was so influential. He should have been a motivational speaker. I mean, now that I think about it, because he was just a uplifting person. You know, he would he would always tell me, you know, you when you have your band, you uplift them, you you support them, you know, you help them, and 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 uh, if they get bigger opportunities, better opportunities, you support them in that, you know, and and uh, you know hold them back because that can that will come back to you yeah. in some form. And that just happened to me this this year. This year, for the first time ever in my life, uh, my drummer for si from 16 years ago, he's playing with me for 16 years, had an opportunity to play with a, a, a bigger artist, a friend of mine, a colleague. And he asked me, like, what do you think? Should I do it? I said, I said you know, I'm never going to hold you back. I'm always going to push you to go, go do bigger and better. I will never hold you back. You have my blessing 100%. You know, I'm here for you. You're still part of the family. And, you know, it just, that's how I was, you know, my dad, I was, and my dad, I guess my dad was an engineer, you know, cause, because he wired me that way. Yeah. I'm wired that way. I'm not, I mean, it did sting. It did hurt to, to lose that part of, of, of the, of the family. Not, and he's not gone, but you know, he's doing something else, but still part of the family. But, you know. But I want to see other people succeed. And I've always said that in my rehearsals. I always say, hey, I'm, I'm, my cousin makes fun of me. He says, man, you're, it's like every, I'm, in, I'm in a class with you every, every rehearsal we have. I said, well, I'm teaching you to run your own rehearsal. I'm teaching you to run your own band because you never know. You might have your own thing going one day. You might want to do your own thing. So I'm not going to teach. I'm not going to feed you. I'm going to teach you how to fish. So I've always, my dad was like that. You know, you always want to uplift people. And that's, yeah. that's how I'm built. 
we only get one we only get one round through this life man right you know so i right. mean people in in we want we want opportunity and we have to be able to to recognize that for other folks and yeah. and, and be encouraging yeah. you know yeah. even if it's something where it doesn't work out you know and then there's other opportunities to maybe come back later on or yeah. down the road well, it's right. like Life short, man. Go, yeah, go after every, everybody. Go after yeah. your dreams. Go after your goals. You yeah. only have one opportunity, man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, Sonny, me and Vicky got to work tomorrow, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> so so tell folks. I'm off tomorrow. It's funny, though, because he probably gets up earlier than both I get, of us. I, really? I get up earlier than hey, both of you. Don't, well, don't wake me up, man. <laughs> I, get, I get up way earlier than both of you. I've been up since 3 this morning. Oof. I, I get up to pee about 3. But I'll go back <laughs> I, go back I did get up to pee this morning at 3, but I, I was up to 3. I've been up since 3 this morning. Yeah. You know what? What mm -hmm. is that? Just an opportunity for you to to work in quiet, or or what are you doing at three? You working out? I was actually working. Okay. I was actually working. I was actually working. So I'm always working. I'm working while I work. Yeah, I always work. I never stop working. It just um, while you're sleeping, other people are making decisions for you. Steve Harvey. Well, I hope y'all make good ones because I'm asleep. <laughs> we, do, we do. We do. We do make good decisions. Hey, man, I miss Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey was something else. Yeah, he's he's good. He's You know, I like him. He's he's very smart. But but now I've been up since about, is it three or yeah, four? I think it's four. Does he at oh, least make breakfast? Yeah. No. no. I don't make breakfast. Oh, I, don't make breakfast. I, I made breakfast. She makes breakfast. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I get up and I go get the bacon. Okay. But she she makes she makes breakfast. She throws in the pan. Yep. I'm hungry actually right now. <laughs> where can where can people find you and what do you what do you got going on? What do you have coming up? Well, we have a lot of stuff. I mean, I don't know what dates do we have coming up. You know, I don't know that stuff. Or local dates. That's not I, my, that's the, you're, you're going to Arizona or something you're soon, right? You're talking to the wrong so I'll say that. Okay, <laughs> that's the one. She's on. Uh, Arizona? No, not soon. We just came back from Arizona. Back we just got yeah, back. That was okay, not too long ago. So what? This weekend we have California going to the Grammys. Um, f next yeah. Thursday we'll be at Tano Mundial, oh, um, sure. presenting there for the, the awards. And I'm gonna be playing with yeah Patsy Torres. Yes, nice Patsy Torres. It's so my mentor. Not the my you know Doctor Patsy Torres. When she when I was a kid, she came to play for us in George uh -huh. West. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. if She was just doing like local schools at the time. She did all the schools. She did all the schools. She yeah. was phenomenal. She is phenomenal. She's and still phenomenal. She was smoking hot. Fun fact, she probably still is. Alec was my with percussionist. Patsy. Yeah, Alec no used to play with Patsy. Alec used to play with Patsy. No she yes, was, he used she, to sing with. He used to dance for her. Yeah, he's one of the dancers. not for her in the band. <laughs> okay, okay, one okay. of the dancers right, in the yeah. band. I was gonna not say because he's Don't. he's real good looking. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. And yeah, he's your type. I know. My wife even noticed. I was like, I told her, I said, hey, check this guy out because she don't get that at home, so she uh -huh. needs to find it online. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, but, but yeah, they can reach you at uh, www.sunnysalsada.net. Um, all the tour dates are in there as well. Um, merchandise will be coming up soon. Or, I'm redoing that. But uh, yeah, you can also reach them with TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, OnlyFans, OnlyFans. Yeah, you got that. I'm, only, I'm no, working. No, I want to get an. I really want to get an OnlyFans. It's OnlyFans. Yeah. Only just OnlyFans. I want just one yeah. fan. <laughs> I want only fan. I want to get OnlyFans just for the freaking controversy of it. <laughs> so I, I'm on oscillating fans. Oscillating fans. Yeah. <laughs> you should get an own. Have you heard of Only Vans? <laughs> no, no, serious. Actually, I think I have. No, so, so Brie Bagwell. I got it on a, my phone. Yeah, Brie Bagwell, who's a Texas artist. She ha She does a podcast out of a van. No called kidding. Only Vans. Oh. I swear, I'm not playing the I was thinking something else, which was yeah, completely no. inappropriate. Yeah. No, yeah, no. So only Vans. What's her name again? Bree Bagwell. Bree Bagwell. She's a Texas country artist. She's one of the biggest ones. That's awesome. One of the most man. popular ones. Yeah, she has a, a thing called Only Vans. It's so funny, dude. <laughs> it's the funniest thing ever, dude. So she, people people can buy merch on your website too. Yes. Yeah. And you you've posted something about like uh, bookings too. Do you still take? Bookings for private shows and things like that, or, or are you yeah. guys pretty booked up for we, the year? We, right? No, we take bookings. If you got money, we'll play. What yeah. you, you got a gig on? No, no, birthday no, party? I, I can't afford you. I'm just, Di I just divorce put party? you. Divorce party? <laughs> My wife might throw one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I yeah. talked to your wife. No, I told her. I told her. I said I, I wouldn't. We can never get divorced. You, you, she stuck with you. I wouldn't let you be happy. So. I wouldn't let you be happy. I wouldn't. Let you be happy. <laughs> I told her. I said, you know what? If you ever left me. I'd become best friends with your new guy, and we would both hate you. 
I'm like, she does that right. I hate when she does that right. <laughs> I hate when she does that. I got it planned now. <laughs> wow, you're you're toxic. Oh man, toxico. big time. Big, she's toxic. She's trapped. And then, I, and then I hit on the primas too. <laughs> hey, I always post that. You'll see it. I put hashtag prima bait. So prima, 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 bait. prima bait. <laughs> prima bait. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm picking up the primas. Man. Oh, hey, it's you okay. Hey, hey, as hashtags. long as you keep in the family. Prima bait. Prima I, always, bait. I always tell her if I ever cheat on you, family family reunions are going to be real strange. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up, dude. Vicky, thank you so much. Well, thank Sunny, you I appreciate me. it, brother. Uh, of course, thank you so much. Um, thank you for this, you know, short, you know, podcast. You know, yeah, yeah. Again. No, I, you know yeah. what? I I enjoyed it. I'm glad we. I hope to do more with you guys in yeah, the future. Absolutely. I think. Uh, I think uh, uh, after you, you, you know, maybe next at the, towards the end of the year, see how things are going in the summer. Man, I I had a great time talking to you guys, and I really enjoyed it. You know, so uh, uh, I need to also trick you into playing my other YouTube channel. So. Uh, yeah. yeah, sneaky on there. You got you. But uh, appreciate you guys. Just, just keep bringing the the what do you want, Patron? Hey, I'll get you. You know what? We'll drink all his stuff next time. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, I was gonna drink it either way. I was drink <laughs> He's got some stuff in there. That we I've heard is we just ask for forgiveness, not for permission. You know what? I, I always tell I always tell people that's that's the way to live life. You know, I screw, screw it, up man. a little bit and just say sorry. Yeah, Oops, yeah. sorry. Hey, I'm Catholic. We just confess every Sunday and start over. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. He gets it. He gets it. He gets it. That's what I say. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Thank oh, you so thank much. You. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast.